won't be as cocky once the Baron's left with your arse. Get out of Rivia! Ha! Sit with us, Witcher! Found your message on a notice board. You see, Palmerin? I told you. The Griffin at White Orchard. I knew that were we only to follow the tracks of its slayer, we would in the end find Geralt. Milton de Peyrac Perrin and Palmerin de Longfall. Good to see you both. Been years. In short, we share your joy. You must forgive us our, uh, surroundings. When we pledged to place the village under our protection, the village elder gave us this hut as our lodgings. He swore it is the best hut in the village. Get involved in some squabble? We discovered that in retreating, the Redanian garrison that left this land's tillers at the mercy of numerous plagues. A tyranny of bandits, the most onerous among them. These plunderers shall soon descend on this village to collect tribute. Milton and I will dissuade them. We are both sworn to fight injustice and oppression wherever they rear their heads. The matter does not concern you, of course, but do us the kindness of waiting. Once we have dealt with these marauders, we have a matter we must present to you. No point fighting bandits. Kill these and others just as bad, or possibly worse, will come in to fill the void. To cast a blind eye upon the evil, there is no honor in it. Can't stay here to protect these folk from the dangers that come their way daily. Saw what I saw. Heard them urge you to leave these raiders alone. Must have good reason to do that. Do you suggest that should we help, we assume responsibility for their fate, for their lives? This burden we cannot agree to bear. Geralt speaks wisely. We know neither this land, nor its peoples, nor its customs. And we have come with another duty altogether. Ah, how I long to return to Toussaint, where all is simpler. Soon, my friend, soon. First, let us convey our missive to Geralt in the manner tradition ordains. Peasants will be fine, Palmerin. Been dealing with bandits for generations. Your words do little to assuage my sense of morality bruised. So fess up. What brings you such a long way? We are to deliver Her Grace the Duchess's message in full, with all due ceremony. For tradition- it is sacred in Toussaint. All right, fine. Most honorable Geralt, slayer of monsters and all Ifels nefarious, which prey on the defenseless of this world, Whereas never have you been known to deny help to the innocent, nor leave widows and orphans to fates undeserved. Answer you now our present summons. Free us from the beast which floods our streets with blood, and sows panic in the hearts of rich and poor alike. Come to our aid, Witcher. Thus humbly beseeches you the Star-Cross City's most gracious protectress, her illustrious highness, Duchess Anna Henrietta. Shall you answer her call? Anna Henrietta really say all that? Word for word? Well, in point of fact, she said, bring me the Witcher and dare not spare your horses. Only make certain this time he comes alone. The Ducal Chamberlain added the rest. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I might add, be it unofficially, that a hefty reward awaits. Yet, the specifics you will need to verify with Her Illustrious Highness. Might be the most fervent request that I take a contract ever. And the most polite. And now we've got all that behind us. I want to hear more about this beast. Some kind of monster? Just guessing. Most assuredly, though no one has caught a good look at it as yet, our only sure witnesses, the bodies massacred in a brutal, horrid manner. Look. Some sketches drafted from descriptions given by those who claim they glimpsed the beast. Each quite different. To my mind, these witnesses lie. How many victims so far? Two. When Her Grace learnt of the second, she discharged us immediately to fetch you, promising grants of land and fortunes in gold, should you answer her summons. An ill wind blows, Geralt. The beast cannot be tracked. Folks say it wields black magic. Also, both victims were nobly born, and the start of a tourney draws near.
Beast wields black magic? What makes you say so? The first victim vanished between bites at a feast. Of the feast goers, none noticed this. They saw but an open window, then heard desperate cries from the street below, where a corpse had just been found. The second killing, similar. A knight in a locked room. Serpents all about the house, guards all around the estate. Yet the beast somehow got him out, dragged him to the town square, and killed him there. No one saw, nor heard, a thing. We have no fear of creatures against which sword and shield protect. But of this beast, nothing is known. Safe that it cannot be traced, kills effortlessly, and with no rhyme or reason we can discern. Anyone tried to hunt it? Knights Errant, for example? Ha! Many have tried. Baiting, waiting in ambush, but to no avail. The beast is clever. It evades all traps and attacks of a sudden. It is like a ghost. An experienced tracker. This is what we need, with knowledge of monsters. In short, we need you. Mentioned a tourney. Why doesn't the Duchess just call it off? Simply, it is too late. The guests have arrived. The best knights of all lands, relatives of the Emperor. The beast could be a threat to others, not just to her grace's subjects. Got it. Before an aristocrat dies, at best it's a scandal. At worst, a diplomatic incident. Uh, I sometimes think back to all the contracts I've ever taken from sovereigns. Can't name hardly any where I came out ahead. You cannot be thinking to refuse. Ah, <sighs> no. Just struck by a thought. How the Duchess can sometimes be... Hmm. Demanding. So you accept the contract? Excellent! We must set off at once. We long wanted this land searching for you. Yet time is of the essence. Ready to go, soon as you're packed. Ha! Ah, then post haste to Toussaint. To Toussaint! Beauclair has changed some these past years. Walk about when you have the chance. You will see for yourself. To me, place always seemed straight out of a fairy tale. Knights errant, elven palaces. You insinuate that we are somehow odd? I shall prove you wrong. This I pledge on the Heron!
Neither is love born of wisdom, Witcher. So, Guillaume, out with it. Which fair damsel inspired you to vow to kill that filth? The most beautiful among them. If he wishes to guard her name a secret, he need not reveal it. You I do not know, sir, nor seem you a knight, yet still I am profoundly grateful, nay, indebted to you for your succor. This trophy, sir, is yours. A giant this close to human settlements? Strange. Well, that was no ordinary giant. His name was Goliath. Rumored to have been a knight once, but one who broke his vows. For this, the Lady of the Lake transformed him into a wild giant and banished him into the Gorgon Hills. So he came back down? Why? Several times each year, hunger chased him into the lowlands. Goliath had killed and devoured many shepherds. Guillaume's hunt served a noble cause. At any rate, it's a tale for more agreeable environs. I'll take the trophy. Why not? Could find someone who'll pay to buy it. Put up a good fight against the giant. Got experience battling monsters? None. In Tucson, we mostly chase bandits. But I vowed I'd bring my heart's champion the head of a monstrosity, as the famed Gottfried, known as the Giant Killer, did. You don't mean to hunt the beast, I hope. The matter's best left to Geralt. Another challenge awaits me. Yet if Geralt is to hunt the beast, he ought to know. It struck again. The river surrendered a corpse. It washed up in the meander by the cockatrice. Damien de la Tour's guardsmen are there already, securing the area. Securing the area? Better go there now before they trample any tracks, manhandle any evidence. Set forth, then. I shall ride for the city to inform her gracious magnificence that Geralt has arrived. We'll meet later, near Guillaume's tent at the Tourney grounds. I shall take you then to see her grace. Barmanin oversaw his upbringing. Guillaume is his kin. switch back and forth between flowery and, well, near normal. We are knights errant, in the service of her gracious magnificence. When we appear in her name or speak on her behalf, we are bound by tradition. Slower. No one here. They must have removed the body already. Let's look around. Make sure they didn't miss anything. Hobnailed boots. Multiple sets of prints. Ducal guard, clearly. Let's see where they went. Walked along the shoreline. Perhaps the body lay on the bank.
drawn here by the smell of blood. Let's keep looking. Notice anything interesting? Alas, no. Notice anything interesting? Alas, nothing. Blood. Guardsmen pulled these nets out of the water, then cut the mutilated body free. Gonna dive in, make sure they didn't miss anything. Nets were attached here. here. Guardsmen must have loaded the body parts onto it, taken them somewhere. Need to find out where. I'd like to look at the corpse before it starts to decompose. The inn. Its patrons must have seen the guardsmen, which direction they took. We should ask there. Seems we've got ourselves an audience. You think this surprising? The locals will tell the children of children they do not have yet, of the day a quartered corpse was pulled from the river. One thing. Found a handkerchief in the water, monogrammed DLC. Mean anything to you? Delacroix? It cannot be. Was it he the beast slew? Seems so. Knew him well? Long past. We were close friends once, but our paths diverged. He was a man of extremes, standing by his companions, no matter the odds, fighting his foes to the bitter end. Foes? You have a lot of them? He did, but I do not see what that has to do with the beast. Ah, Geralt, you've struck a raw nerve. Memories of a time long past, to which I'd rather not return now. I understand. We can talk later. Let's go to the tavern. I shall have to leave you soon. Return to court. Barely got back to Toussaint. A knight in the service of her illustrious highness knows no rest. In fact, I'd feared I would return too late to fulfill my duty. Seems I've arrived in the nick of time. Once you have finished examining the corpse, be sure to report to Anarietta. Anarietta? Her Grace, the Duchess. I forget myself at times. We address each other by our first names in private. Never in Palmrit's presence, however. He finds such familiarity offensive. Stocks and the whip await those right. A watering hole for traders, smugglers, boatmen. But you will find no better crayfish chowder in all Toussaint. What? With no lads brave enough? Of course we have. But bravery is not enough against the beast. Ah! Duke of Clerks looking for help. Could be good coin to be made. By my troth, could that be the musty scent of fresh pate? Naught else, Sir de Peyrac Peyron. I see time has not dulled your senses. We would be honored if you would join us. Uh, your companion as well. 
But why do I not detect even a whiff of crayfish chowder? No soup today, on account of there being no crayfish. I reckon you've not heard, but all I caught was a corpse. I awoke at the crack of dawn, as I do each day. But when I looked up, I beheld a blood-red sky. This corpse is precisely why we're here. For the man whom you've invited to join you at the table was summoned from a far-off land by her gracious magnificence. He is tasked with tracking and killing the beast. We invited two men to join us, yet since Sir de Peyrac Peyron in temperament is more akin to hare than hound, I surmise the other is the hunter. With whom do we have the pleasure? Name's Geralt. A humble introduction. You've clearly not tarried long with Sir de Peyrac Peyron. Spare us the petty insults. Geralt is a master of the witchering trade. He has questions concerning the beast's last victim. I was the one to find the corpse. The sun had just risen when I awoke, sat straight up in my bed, looked out the window, and beheld a sky red as blood. Ask Geralt, please, or we shall be here till winter. Must have been early in the morning. Went to check your nets and then... I stepped out of my hut and saw... By my troth, to the point, man! You found a body ensnared in your crayfish nets. We know this already. What happened then? Did you see anyone nearby? Did you spy anything noteworthy? Anything at all? Not a soul around, just me. As for noteworthy... Um, hmm, well... What did you see? But be warned. If I hear the sky was red again... I saw... a head bobbing, eyes bulging, the tongue blew and popped out. Next to it, a hand rocking upon the water. Get a good look at the body parts? They gave me such a fright! I bolted to town, fast as my legs would take me, then returned with guardsmen who told me to keep out of their way. They had a hard haul. The parts were so tangled up in my nets, they were forced to cut them. Need to examine the body. Know where they took it? They ferried it across, then loaded it on a cart and hauled it to a cellar at Corfo Bianco to keep it cool, see? What? Why, Corfo Bianco is Baron Russell's estate. When he learns they've turned his cellar into a morgue, He'll set his hounds on them. While you were caliphanting about the north, his vineyard was auctioned off. Who was that woman who just left? Didn't see her before. Didn't notice her walk in either. Doubtless Linnis, the innkeep's daughter. But hold, Geralt, because this is an outrage. Rossell's vineyard was auctioned off? Inconceivable. It is no secret the Baron had gambling debts up to his ears. It finally came time to collect. His creditors auctioned off his property. The Ducal Chancellery bought it, in fact. Russell now bunks with his brother in Vico Faro. I told Russell he'd get his comeuppance. How long can one draw on past heroics? His creditors must finally have to find that his promises meant nothing. Such are the times. Today's knights are pale shadows of the heroes of yore. It's true what they say. God sent the beast to punish us for straying from the old paths. So folk think the beast's divine punishment. Knights have turned their backs on the old customs. Where they were defenders of the duchy, they're now defenders of their own tushes. Why, you insolent? Let him talk. The duchess trades in titles. Grants honors to ill to us. We've strayed from the path of virtue, lost the gods' favor, so the gods sent retribution. Don't listen to that nonsense, girl. It's rehashed street preacher Cotsman. Yes, the rebel rousers have been sprouting up like weeds lately, each offering the same bill of goods. They say anything else about the beast? Besides it being a messenger of the gods. The Toussaint are no fools. 
They see clearly the beast kills on days honoring patron saints. Picky monster. Thanks for the hospitality. Time I examined the corpse. Corvo Bianco lies a short way from here, near the tourney grounds. Just follow the road and you'll arrive. Not coming with? Oh yeah, duty of some sort calls. Some sort? <laughs> Her grace bestowed a great honor on me, even before we departed for Velen. I'm to play the hare during this year's game in the palace gardens. When you see me in my costume, you will wet yourself laughing. A little tempted to ask a few questions, but it sounds like a long, complicated story. One involving lengthy digressions into local history and tradition. So, see you later, Milton. And good luck. In Tucson, it is easier to find a bard without a loot than a bard who is sober. Oh, what? dear fellow, with a fish hook like... Uh, normally, I'd encourage you to try our famed fisherman's chowder. But alas, we are all out of crayfish. Could replace them with something else. Perch, for example. Replace crayfish with fish? I beg you. What next? Vinegar for wine? Parsley for thyme? Huh? Your nordlings are a pleasant lot, but about cuisine you know nothing. Got any gossip? Fishermen talking about anything interesting? Yes, about a nortling who would replace crayfish with pike. Asked a serious question. Hmm, and a tactless one. I do not if stroke on my clients, and I certainly don't repeat anything I chance to hear. Thanks. So long. What's in the works today? Oh, Swilling the wine, hey. rolling in the hay. Don't crowd around. Run, Roach. Sounds like a fight. Have to hurry. Why'd you kill these people? Clearly wasn't for their blood. We don't have to fight. You are wrong. I can't. 
cannot let you leave.
over you! One is never hung over. Uh. Uh. The Camelanga best not be late. The giant edge dwarf the war so hard. This is an outrage. Need to speak to the Duchess urgently. All right, you scamps. Store is done. Go find your parents. But the Pamarin, what about the story of Ritik and the dragon? The tales for another time. But take a good look at the man who stands before you now. This is Geralt of Rivia, the master witcher who lent his valiant hand to the defeat of the giant Goliath. Master witcher, is it true virtue always trumps villainy? Not always. Could go either way. Sometimes virtue wins, sometimes villainy gets the upper hand. Still worth being good. But why? If it doesn't mean you'll win! Pomeran's story. Think back. A decent man attracts other good folk, makes friends he can count on. A rogue? Well, he can only count on other rogues. And who would you rather have for a friend? A man of virtue? I must agree. Now, that will do for questions. Go find your parents. Her enlightened highness has doubtless arrived at the tourney grounds to watch the battle in the arena. If we hurry, we'll be in time to speak with her before the spectacle begins. Lead the way. Who's fighting? Elf Guardian gladiators? Close, but not quite. As you will soon see. Someone's gonna fight a Shalemar with only some bells on its tail to confuse it, slow it down? What effort is the problem? The beast is a gift from the Emperor, no less. I saw the spectacle of the sword of Yorina in Nunyo. There, a knight came the Shelmar with bells on its tail. Might have gotten lucky. Shelmar might have been lame. Who knows? Only a witcher has a real chance against a healthy Shelmar. And that's not even every witcher. Besides which, releasing a monster that dangerous in front of a crowd? Plain irresponsible. Who's going to fight the beast? Guillaume, the young man you met. Yeah. Mentioned he'd promised his heart's capture a monster trophy. Great love demands great sacrifices. Let's go. My imminent victory to fair lady Vivian! It's begun. The fight shall have to end first. We must wait.
damn it. by Geralt of Rithia, master of the witchering trade. Behold, as the last gasps of life seep from the beast. Master Geralt, do what you must. Finish the deed! There's no threat. No need to kill it. A victor may always show mercy. It is his right. Long live Garrett the Merciful! Pikeman, see to the beast. That came damned close to dying. I'm fine. Not hurt at all. Vivian? Smile as befits a hero and keep silent. Speech clearly paints you. She approaches. Geralt, we must talk. Vivian, you shall talk later. In the medic's tent. Geralt, magnificent, breathtaking. Your grace. We knew that to summon you was a brilliant idea. We are delighted, raffish, to have struck upon it. And I'm truly... Uh, honored. See to our young hero. Hop, hop. For we must make off with Geralt. We should talk. We had been long awaiting your arrival. Had nearly lost hope. Then suddenly, that entrance, so spectacular. Your Grace, Shalemars are dangerous creatures, even to knights in full plate armor. Nonsense. In Toussaint, knights have battled beasts for mere glory since time immemorial. True. Guillaume suffered a few bumps, scars, and bruises, but in return, gained eternal glory as he who slew the monster. Mm -hmm. What about the crowd? Say the Shalemar had vaulted into the stands. Would have been a massacre. Geralt, though we value your fortuitous intervention in the arena, we would remind you your services have been retained. And as shall soon become clear, you will be generously compensated for completing another task altogether. Your grace. My contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally. 
but not here. We shall need Damien. He let the investigation pending your arrival, but wherever could he be? Come, we must find him. Tell us, have you come alone? Or did Viscount Julian accompany you? Wish to see Dandelion, your grace? Yes. I mean, no. Ugh. <sighs> yes. But solely to tell him we regret. Yes, deeply regret rescinding the death sentence we so justly handed down upon him. If we could turn back time, we would make certain he sat in a tower till he rotted. No, we would ensure he was broken on the wheel, then drawn, hanged, and quartered. The very man we would entrust with these tasks. Damien de la Tour, captain of my personal guard. Your Grace, Witcher. Greetings. Sorry to have to tell you, but the guardsmen handling the last victim's body. I know already. The creature in the cellar of Corfo Bianco. Was it the beast? No. A Bruxa, a kind of vampire. Not the beast, but tied to it in some way. You know this how? Through a careful analysis of the evidence, both on the riverbank and at Corvo Bianco. Do you mean to insinuate the investigation thus far has been sloppy? Geralt insinuates nothing of the sort. We must listen to him attentively. I examined the body of the beast's last victim. Might have found something. Need to analyze it. A quiet place, that's what I could use most right now. And maybe the help of an alchemist or a mage. Also like to hear all you know about the previous victims. Take it Sir Delatour is my man for that. Firstly, call me Damien, please. Secondly, you should know I spoke against summoning you here. I've heard much about you. You bring trouble, or thus far have, always. And we've enough trouble as it is. Yet we are capable of defeating the beast on our own, without an outsider's help. I've no doubt about it. Damien, we settled the matter of the Witcher's employ some time past. Definitively. Since you have broached it nonetheless, let us discuss Geralt's pay. Are the legends true? Do Witchers usually demand that which you find at home, yet did not expect? Not quite, Your Grace. Law of surprise? It's something we invoke at times, but rarely. Usually we just take gold. Disappointing. This law sounds rather romantic. On the other hand, on returning to the palace, we would likely find impatient petitioners or a set of sample fabrics for a new dress. Poor rewards, both. I fear you'd not have much use for any of the surprises we are likely to come upon. Thus, we've decided you shall receive the deed to a vineyard, Corvo Bianco, and the sum of coin. You will doubtless consider this adequate. Title to the vineyard shall be given to you at once. Surely you'll need lodgings while you hunt. The coin, however, will be yours only once you have slain the beast. Lovely, generous gesture, Your Grace. But Corvo Bianco. Isn't it the Duchy's temporary morgue? Is it now? The Chancellery is bungled things again, we fear. Not to be left unsupervised for one instant. Yet, in its mood, a morgue should present minimal problems to a Witcher. What's more, nothing enhances a wine's reputation better than a grim legend. Thank you, Your Grace. I accept the contract, of course. But as I said before, I'll need some information. How did it start? Who was the first victim? Crispy was the first to die. He was famed once for his many glorious tournament victories. Then he grew old, hung up his sword, and took to winemaking. Crespi was not loved by the wine merchants. He was ruthless in business and thought to cheat many a time. He asked us for a dispensation from all court ceremonies. We did not grant it. We could not. 
Once you've taken the oath of a knight, you remain a knight till death. How'd he die? Where'd they find the body? Quite unusual, the circumstance. He was at a feast when suddenly one of his fellow feast-goers noticed he was missing. The town watch found him an hour later. On his hands and knees, propped against the town pillory, his sword hanging from his neck. He had died of wounds inflicted with claws, not a weapon. Blows of great force. So he died suddenly, but the body was on its knees, meaning someone posed it. So it seems. Second murder. Tell me what you know. In the city there are certain nooks. No one reasonable ventures there after dark. Ramon Dulac's corpse was found in one such place. With the first murder, terror gripped the city. Its inhabitants grew wary, kept to safe areas. Consequently, news of the second victim came to us from a group of concerned cut purses. Criminals fear the beast? Telling in a way. Take it you've excluded the possibility that Ramon died at the hands of these bandits. Do you believe me, an amateur? Not hands, but claws killed Ramon Dulac. The wound was deep, clean. His body was found in the gutter, dressed in nightshirt and cap, a pillow placed under his head, and his sword replaced by a bed warmer. Ramon Dulac, a knight who but a dozen years past was an advisor to our father, the Duke. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make him look ridiculous. Maybe revenge was the motive. It's not out of the question. Dulac had shady dealings with the criminal underworld, but no one ever came forth with concrete proof of any misdoings. So, first two victims were knights, best years behind them. The same could be said of the third. Sir Delacroix was wont to claim that in modern times, knights face new challenges, enterprise being the latest addition to the chivalric virtues. He made a veritable fortune in the grain trade. Palmerin even nicknamed him Sir de la Stinch. Found a coin pouch on his body, contained florins dating from various times, hailing from different provinces of the Empire. Delacroix loved coin, true, but had no patience for numismatics. Lots of similarities between the victims. All the bodies were found in strange places under extraordinary circumstances. Seems the murderer, whoever or whatever it is, has some meaning to convey. These were honorable men. We are horrified by the disdain, the disrespect with which they were treated. These were knights of Toussaint. Blast it. Might be the point. From what you say, none was a model of virtue. Ever considered that's what the beast's trying to draw attention to? All the murdered men were knights who swore fealty to the five chivalric virtues. And even if Knights the... of Toussaint swear fealty to what virtues exactly? Honor, wisdom, generosity, valor and compassion. Five virtues. Why are they so important to your knights? Strange question. Your Grace, forgive me. I'm a foreigner trying to understand another land's customs. You are forgiven. According to legend, the virtues we cultivate were bestowed upon us by the Lady of the Lake. How we truly came to espouse them, none remember. In Toussaint, we believe men of low birth should be simple-hearted and obedient. We expect much more, however, of our knights. They are to be soldiers and courtiers, lords and servants. Thus, the need for clear moral guidelines. At the time of his dubbing, a knight vows to demonstrate throughout his life honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Beast seems to be pointing up moral decay, denouncing it. Victims were all humiliated. Might have been murdered to emphasize their lack of specific chivalric virtues. Honor, compromised by the pillory. Wisdom, by ridicule. Generosity by a coin pouch shoved down a throat. It seems to fit, true, though not perfectly. Can't discount the theory if it's on the lips of everyone in town. Say our reasoning's right. Next murder will be just as showy and denounce the victim's lack of the fourth virtue, valor. We can also assume that victim will be an elder knight. Let's think. At the moment, all the knights are either at the tourney grounds or in the palace gardens. Our annual hare hunts shall begin there shortly. 
Have you heard of the custom? Milton mentioned something. Seemed excited to prance around in a bunny costume. Not sure why. Hang on. Strange circumstances. A knight advanced in years. The famed cowardice of rabbits. Could it be that simple? Is Milton de Peyrac Peyren the next victim? Milton also knew Delacroix. Told me so down by the river. Damien! To me something so obvious. De Peyrac Peyren, Crespi, Delacroix, and De Lac formed a knightly team. It was years ago, but... They were a team? They were close friends, tightly knit, and as such, earned the trust of our father, the Duke. We often witnessed him turn to them with delicate matters. Later, their paths diverged. Unlikely to be a coincidence. Beast must know it too. It's a lead, I'm sure. Your Grace, we need to find Milton, immediately. Rather problematic. You see, the garden entertainments are due to start, and he's disguised as the Hare, hiding somewhere, waiting for some tipsy courtiers to find him. The Hare's hiding place is a carefully guarded secret. We must call off the game, at once. First and foremost, we must remain calm. Damien, order the garden searched immediately, but discreetly. By no means can we disrupt the festivities. Panic will only incite the beast to strike sooner. And you, Witcher, follow me. My gardens, my night, I shall take before. A murder is out of the question. I will not allow it. Not near my palace. Horses? Ready our horses! Your Grace! <laughs> What the hell? Why I should... Your Highness, I... Mind it doesn't get wrinkled. Seems right at home in the saddle. This way, through town. Try not to lose your way. Sharp right. Take care. Good. Participants must find a unicorn's horn, a golden fish, and a phoenix egg. With these in hand, they can deduce where the hair, Milton, hides. Meaning they need to find those things too? We've no other option, but time is of the essence, so we shall have to break the rules. A fruitful hunt to you, Witcher. <laughs> Through here. I shall show you where the hunt plays out. Then we will split up. You will get hold of the unicorn horn and the golden fish. While I nab the phoenix egg. That will be quickest. Fish. Do I need a rod or a net? Please, Garrett. It's not a real fish. 
Look there, towards the water. See the lights? The hunters are trying to hook the fish from boats. You must simply dive in and find it. The unicorn. How do I catch it? It's terribly skittish, true, but I'm sure you will find a way to earn its trust. It turns around, it's over there, look! The Colton fish and the horn both contain things or clues that will help us find Milton. Once you have fish and horn, find me among the other Phoenix encounters. All clear? Then let's get to it. Perhaps an apple will work, or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister, were you still a virgin. Do you really wish to have this conversation again? Here and now? Hush, or you'll spook the beast. We shall try the sweets. Hey, folks, gonna have to ruin your fun. Sorry. Who's that? likes carrots. Maybe Unicorn will too. This is an outrage. An outrage, I tell you. It's against the rules. Roach won't eat bread either, except if it's stale. I know it's not real, but it's so beautiful, all the same. Delicious crunchy carrot. Easy. Gardens are huge. Better off on horseback. Faster. Hunter Duke Reynolds rode such troubles were simply. Uh, it again did drink, it again did swim the gardens. Under. My foo foo out! One of 
What the blazes? Did someone just dive in the water? Perhaps that's the way to do it. Sure, if you're a peasant. Is that not counter to the rule? Hey, wait. Stop. It's important. King Cormorant, sire, accept this offering we bring. Prithee cast upon us your merciful eye and bear before us its secrets. As the moon its heavenly course doth trace, in my domain I await that moment of grace when a soul of good or ill repute brings me a gift, fitting tribute. A key. <laughs> Why, you bomb-bot stretch! He's ruined the game! Disgraceful! Please, Your Grace. We do not please. We act out of the highest necessity. All shall be explained later. But it's against the rules. I am the rules. Geralt! At last. Got a key and a clue. I've another. Show me yours. Who wrote this drivel? I begin like a groan, hollowed out with ease, then end like a mouse with a head of hard cheese. Let's see. Groan with ease gives us green, right? And mouse with the head of hard cheese. Greenhouse? You're a genius. Several greenhouses in the gardens, indeed. But only one with the locks, the key to which looks just like the one we found. Greenhouse, is there? Let's go.
I'm here. This belonged to you, maybe? It did, but you may keep it. I've a new one. I do not know you. I've done you no harm. Yet first you butchered a Bruxer who was dear to me. Now you pursue me. Why? You've killed four innocent people, at least. And you? How many innocents have you cut down? I don't kill innocents. Murderers, though, you bet. I'll soon be done. I've but one left. And you, should you not stand down? And once you're done, intend to leave? Go kill somewhere else? No! I intend to live uh. happily ever after.
want to stay where you are. Regenerate! I know you're in trouble. I can help. I'll help myself. No, he's my friend. Yes, Geralt, it's me. Regis? I... you all right? All is well. All's in order. Wounds such as these heal on vampires in moments. But we've not seen one another in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you... It... I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a certain castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peak form, mind you, but were I human, folk would think me a demigod, I dare say. I'm sorry. What happened? It was my fault. Never got a chance to apologize. No need, Geralt. Bygones. I did not have to join you on that expedition. No one twisted my arm. Miraculous regeneration. How do you manage it? I had help. From the one you hunt. Him? How? And what have you been doing all these years? Not the time nor place for such stories. I suspect we'll get a chance to speak at ease and at length later. Now, however, we must deal with the reason that brought us both here. <laughs> Local serial killer seems to obey you. Maybe you could talk him out of it, convince him to stop murdering. Why do you think I've come? It shall not be easy, as death laugh can be rather stubborn. Though you must certainly recall that neither do I surrender readily. So that's his name. He's your friend? You might call it that. Though Detlaf is... How would you humans put it? More bestial than I am. But not to worry. I'm working on him. Haven't exactly done a great job with that. He's killed one night since I got here. At least three others before I arrived. For good reason, I'm sure. Understand. Detlaf is not some decadent shit who kills for sport, or to assuage a dryness of throat or a dullness of mood. So in your opinion, what are his reasons? Precisely what I wish to find out. And then I will convince him of the error of his ways. Got a lot of faith in the guy. Despite appearances to the contrary, you two are quite alike. You've both noble hearts, yet you both are wont to perform ignoble deeds. When circumstances force you to, of course. Remember the year 964? That was three centuries ago. Blind fear gripped Rivia, Lyria and Spala. Women and children were dying. Their mutilated, dismembered corpses littered the fields. Brute of Lyria. Read about it. Chewed up almost two hundred, then fell to a common poacher supposedly armed with a dagger blessed by some prophet. It fell to Detlaf, who then found a poacher asleep in the brush near his snares and dropped the fiend's corpse at his feet. And thus, a legend was born. Huh. Vampires rarely help humans. Must have had his own agenda, hunting the beast. You err. He slew it for one reason alone. The monster killed a lad who once in the street had offered Detlaf an apple, expecting nothing in return. Terribly noble of him. You do not have a monopoly on altruism, my friend. Vilgefort melted my body. Detlaf found what was left. As per our codex, he had a choice. To leave me where I was, or to care for me and nurture my remains. He chose the latter. Regenerated me at no small expense in his own blood. Do you know what that means to a vampire? The gravity of the endeavor? Probably same thing it means to a human. You owe him your life. Much more than that. The act itself made us blood brethren. A bond so strong humans cannot even imagine. Which is why I know something ill is afoot. Always had an overdeveloped sense of empathy. Each vampire has a unique talent. One they hone over centuries. It's precisely what renders us so difficult to classify. Detlaf's trump card is his herd instinct, his tribal propensity. In point of fact, 
He prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. If he walks among you, killing egregiously, it can only mean something's upset him immensely. Anything specific? Some set of things that'd be likely to set him off? How should I say this? Detlaf doesn't understand men, their world, its rules, its conventions. He's naive in a sense. He doesn't comprehend your games, knows not what it means to lie, deceive. <laughs> suggesting he's maladjusted, inventing his rage. I'm suggesting maladjustment can at times breed conflict. But is it the case this time? I cannot say, but intend to find out. Gotta find him before something upsets him even more and all Beauclair is awash with blood. Well, we share a cause then, just like the old days. Not entirely. I mean, when I find him, you know. I know you've a contract on his head. Yet your true task is to stop the beast killing, not necessarily to kill the beast, am I right? All in all, sure. Let us find him. By the time we do, I hope I'll have convinced you Detlaf is no monster. Fine, all right already. But for now, evidence is stacking up against him. Hear that? The posse. Knights must have tracked me here. I prefer they not find me here. I've makeshift quarters at Mela Shays Long Cemetery. We'll meet there. See you. Witcher, we flew here as fast as our courses would carry us. Yet I fear we're late all the same. Pray. Where is the beast? Still investigating. About to inspect this site. Withdraw your men before they trample all over the evidence. Ahem! <clears throat> Sirs! We must let the Witcher do his work. Milton's murder cannot go unoffensed. Wants to play tag? Glad to see her. Sir, sir, a letter for you, sir. Letter? Who from? Can't rightly say, sir. I was just to deliver it. Here. And thanks. No, sir. Thank you. And I truly hope I'll be of service again. My dear friend.
I've been told you're on a jaunt to Toussaint. I do hope you don't overtax yourself during the wine festival. The effects of such exertion at your age can indeed prove most detrimental. I've come upon some information which might be of interest to you. While browsing through a colleague's book collection, I found mention of one Professor Moreau of Beauclair, who conducted research into Witcher mutations. The details I've come to learn are rather vague, and his laboratory's location remains a mystery. Yet his journal should at least provide hints as to both. It is said he was laid to rest with it in his tomb. I enclose a map I found in the tome I happened upon. Though less than completely legible, I trust it will prove useful nonetheless. Should you grow tired of sampling Beauclair's ladies, wines, and other exquisite delicacies, this matter might prove a fruitful diversion. Investigate at your leisure. Your friend, Yennefer. Hmm. A professor who studied Witcher mutations might actually be worth looking into. <laughs> In the north, there's a nice tune. Melon, it's cool. Her bellies are pinched so tight. Folk don't drink wine. She still instead pushed. Lock Celeve. Might be worth looking into. Somebody needs an escort. Not something I do often, but might be worth investigating. Jather over a dockside hall. Apparently, they argued who would go first. Not bad. Was that truly necessary? And our knights. Couldn't have picked some other place to meet. Regis! Damn it. Locked. No way I got the place wrong. This is it. Gotta be. Gotta be another way in around here.
Johnny's eye. Ought to use it. Interesting. Agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliché can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. Could have left the door unlatched. What of my privacy? I value it rather deeply. Unmolested, especially by unwanted guests, that's my preferred state. Besides, I knew you'd find a way to get in. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want or even need must matter little. What matters is what Detlaf wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Mm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. Abruxa had taken an interest in it. It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. The hand. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Kobinaris' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Oblitera. There's a copy of Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Kovinarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it, just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated, so without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Kobinaris gave a rather poetic name. Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Dedloff's hideout. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen, and the ornamentation. It comes from our home, where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here, guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans and the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I, in turn, gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. Can't you just summon Detlaf? You're both hired vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Uh... There is a being who can summon Detlaf. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being 
Well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of resonance won't be easy. You guess correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison, to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's mamoon glands, the closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. I'd rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. that a raven rather a common sight at this latitude very intelligent fowl i asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned him and his brethren perhaps they'll find one in the area and i would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would with all due respect your skills my friend it will take them some time nonetheless so perhaps you'd care for a snifter of mandrake Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? So, think you've set a nice little trap for me? Sorry. Wanna get me to confess? Gonna have to try harder. <laughs> I love a challenge. In that case, my ears are cocked. What must I do? <sighs> How about you get the ball rolling? Reveal one of your secrets. Vampires, intriguing creatures, must lead fascinating lives. Anything in particular interest you? Curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There, I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbor's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, Sir Dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back, defeated the wild hunt together. Ooh, seeing I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough, but it's a conversation we'll have another time. Need to know more about you now. Gotta ask you the big question, one everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. 
Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlef, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. Man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate? Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity is a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible. As my presence proves, but, but I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit, but Triss helped me get it back. Actually pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living higher vampire's help. However, if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say. But I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? Seer determined to get an answer, to find out if I like being a witcher. Just refused to ask directly, as always. I like being on the path. I like picking up a lead, a trail. I like the tension right before a fight. And nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast. Even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah, not something I think about much, but I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. Ever vigilant, even in his sleep. 
Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caraberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. For somehow this will manage to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the white survived entirely unmolested. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote, no more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or, uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. Sorry, Geralt, I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct, and a curse in one place. That a coincidence, or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... spoons. Spoons? Spare me the sceptical smile, I'm but the bearer of this news. Or perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that white. Uses it in its bruise. Do you imagine the white will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. <laughs> For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were going to make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. Oh, 
dressings, bandages. What's that about? shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Die. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Spoon's incredible. The craftsmanship. Must have graced a rich man's table. themselves. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally, still searching for the right spoon. Spoon, pretty ordinary, maybe a little old. A spoon key, sophisticated crafting, tag bears a description. White's a true collector. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Again, shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror? White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Woman's name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Broken neck. Indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Actually, does seem like a white slayer. Bit atypical, but still. Aldrin should be somewhere around here. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. I was 
looking for. Why it's not particularly tidy. Obsessed, a real collector, thoroughbred. Spoon, pretty ordinary, maybe a little old. Thousands of them here. White's been a collector for years. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. Tried to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Spoons. No, that won't work. 
You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. someplace safe. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did 
Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Think your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our Codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Send your spies after me? My watchers? Were something to go wrong, I could then arrive quickly to help. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, a solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement. But, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. All right. So what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There, we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Tesha Mudna. What's it like? It is a place of torment. A torture chamber. Long ago, Shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. Common folk wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us, seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? 
Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Tesham Mudna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage, sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. See no reason to dawdle. Tesham Mutna, take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the raven did me. I've also taken some sangurium, a solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallant to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. <sighs> Your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. As things stand, the die is cast. <sighs> High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's spinning already, and you're... you're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me. We have arrived. The sacrificial chamber of torture and torment lies underground. Sure you know what you're doing? I can only hope I do. Please, let's go. The longer we delay, the less control I shall have of my faculties. I'd really prefer not to hurt you. You lead. Servers must be getting close to their feeding ground. Correct. I told you there'd be danger. <sighs> Beyond this wall lies an ancient vampire dungeon. Seen a lot of things in my time. Nothing quite like this, though. My, I feel honored. A man with such a wealth of experience, yet I'm about to show him something new. Now, to open it. How the hell? It's an ancient form of protection against unwanted guests. The mechanism which releases the latch reacts only to a higher vampire's blood. Tricky mechanisms, a vampire hideout. Fortified, secured. Must have been important to your species once. It shall always be so. During the conjunction, the gate from our world into this one opened upon this land and no other. This was the first place we saw. It's not far now. Human husbandry and care? This for real? The author observed humans, their behavior, over the many years he spent breeding them. Morally suspect though it may be, it's a thorough survey of the topic. This place. There's evil here. Death hangs in the air. Yes. A great many beings have breathed their last here. Cliffs are carved into the rock. Coated with blood used to be. 
They mean something? They're emblems, symbols of uh, what you would call tribes, dispersed throughout the world after the conjunction. My ancestors placed them here to remind us all where we came from. Seems your kind assembled a peculiar little library. Indeed, though I personally did not lay a hand to it. What's this symbol mean? It's the symbol of the Tadet. Those who went east, beyond the Blue Mountains. And this one? Which tribe's this? Garisham. My tribe, and Dedlaus. We both remained in this part of the world. Cells? Who for? Ah, disgraceful. Excruciatingly so, this particular page from my history. I'd rather not summon the demons of the past, if it's all right with you. What's this symbol mean? It's the symbol of the Tadet. Those who went east, beyond the Blue Mountains. Whose is this cliff? Amaran. They ventured beyond the sea. The symbol of the Tadet. Those who went east beyond the Blue Mountains. Charming place. But what are all those cages for? Mentioned one vampire being kept here. Yes, well, you see, humanitarians is something my ancestors were not. They concluded Kagmar would best be punished if he were tormented with the scent of blood he could not taste. Thus, they also kept humans here. Humans whose blood they slowly let. Kagmar ranted and raged in pain as those, those humans slowly bled to death. They treated them like livestock, live bait. I'd like to be able to turn back time. Deny it, but alas, I can do neither. Feel shame for my brethren. That is all I can do. Don't take it so hard. Nothing you could have done about it. Let's get to work. Well, that was awkward. Fine. I prepared the bait. Please be so kind and place it. Ideally at the tunnel entrances. The scent will spread most effectively then. Place the bait at the tunnel entrances. Monsters will catch its scent more quickly. When I think how these tunnels got here, scent shivers. It was the natural order of things. The place reeked of death and it attracted necrophages. Set. What now? I shall enter the cage. You must chain me inside. The bars are made of an alloy that will prevent me from transforming into mist. Kinda thought you wouldn't want to. I shall be in great pain. My sole thought being to stop that pain. I cannot know what I will do. We must hurry. The beasts have caught the scent of also my head. I started spinning. Is that the blood? 
Sarah. Someone who's never experienced a vampire's bloodlust does not know the true meaning of thirst. it in this state. Tell me how. I'll help you. Any better? Far from ideal. And some time must pass before I fully recover. But yes, a bit better. Thank you. Never expected it to be like that. You didn't tell me. We need not discuss it. But we do. Because if I'd known you were going to subject yourself to torture... What would you have done? Found Detloff some other way. I did not wish you to use any other way. Did that occur to you? No. Because I thought no being would ever willingly subject itself to that kind of pain. You vampires aren't any different from us in that regard. I told you. The pain is my way of paying my debt. The enormous debt I owe Detloff. If I had to do it again, I would, in a heartbeat. Resonance, it's ready. Are you certain you followed the formula? The proportions were exact, the brewing time precise. This is important, Geralt. The slightest deviation could cost even a witcher dearly. Relax, got some experience brewing potions. Very well. In that case, let's begin.
Excuse me. I shall only take a moment. You jumped the queue, sir. But, Count, sir, you must understand. I have a meeting. Sir, Count, sir, you were next. Please, take a seat. This gentleman was here first. Step down, or you shall regret it. Ah, <laughs> fails to realize he was your friend, Count. It was then I ordered him to give up his seat and step off the stand. If only you'd seen his face. We got him good, didn't we, Detlam? And then Mother insisted we buy the mill. <laughs> Curious, eh? I have a yarn to spin for friends and associates. Forgive me. What? Awake at last, you ride like a squirrel caught in a snare. I'd begun to fear they were death throes, that you'd departed. <clears throat> uh, uh, sure wasn't pleasant, but it worked. What did you see? Delacroix. His death did not come easy. Seems dead laugh had made friends with him, still killed him, chopped up his corpse. And he was overcome with fury, remorse, cut off the hand that had committed the murder. Hmm, interesting. And entirely unlike the Detlef I know. See anything else? Saw a moment. Delacroix did something selfless, was kind to Detlef. Guess it could have been the start of their friendship. Why the uncertainty? Nothing extraordinary about it. Normal, everyday situation, really. Visions were supposed to issue from strong emotions. Clearly, the situation provoked such emotions in Detlaf. Keep in mind, he did later murder Delacroix. Killing someone who's grown dear to us, it's bound to elicit strong emotion. Vampires are no different in that regard. Did you see anything else? There was something. Showed up twice in the vision. A boot black stand. Dedlov first met Delacroix there. Went back after the murder, actually. Peculiar. Stand was somewhere in the port district. And the boot black acted as if he knew Dedlov. Hmm. That would be even odder. Perhaps we should have a chat with the lad. Though I would expect no breakthroughs. It's our only lead. I'll go talk to him. Coming with. I shall join you later if it's no trouble. I don't yet feel strong enough to venture out. That's fair. Rest up. Be back as soon as I learn anything.
hurt you, you little fart. So how would you explain it? Whether it pours for a week or the sun bakes our pates, we've always mud up to our ankles here. You can't blame me for Beauclair's fickle weather. Fickle weather? I've seen you. You empty your chamber pot in front of our shop each morning, so folks will dirty their boots go to you to get them cleaned. A far-fetched conspiracy theory, sirs. I'll conspire to welt your bum with my belt. Come here. Leave him alone. Just who the spit are you? A witcher, and I'd advise you to go back where you came from. I thought witches defend men from monsters, not cheats from justice. Need to talk to the boy. You can chat to him all you like, after we tan his hide. So stand down. Not gonna happen. Won't it? Well, then we'll thrash you as well, which is all the same to me. It's not allowed, that kind you of... Break your you break your legs, vagrants! Teach you to help scoff lords and cheats! Let's charge! Come on! Take him for a ride! Now, now drop your dick! What's the meaning of this? The brawl? Who started it? I'm investigating the beast, on the Duchess's orders. Ah, yes. We've heard of you. And these men? What are they doing? Nothing, really. Had a little misunderstanding. Figured it out, though. Uh-huh. I see. As the Duchess's protege, you may go. But this lot, that's another matter. You'll come with us. Some time in a cell ought to scare the dimwits out of you. Come on. You're very good with your fists, sir. Wouldn't be looking for work, would you? We'd make a fine duo. Yeah? How you imagine that working? Splendidly. That's how. I suggest a partnership, where I see to the boots while you stand guard, and as you're the stronger, come morn you take the chamber pot out and help me make mud. Bit about the mud's true? They were right to want to box your ears. I've got to make a living somehow, so what say you, sir? Partners? Let me think about it. Listen, I'm interested in a certain gentleman. Oh, wait, wait! Before we get to talking, please, take a seat. But my boots are clean. In this city, no boots are clean unless they just come off my stamp. A seat, sir, please. So then... Who was it you wanted to ask about? One of your patrons. Tall, elegant black frock. Not from around here. An arrival? Hmm. Indeed. I hear a faint bell ringing. A modest sum might make it sing out loud and clear. How much? Let's say... 500 crowns. What? Gotta be kidding me. What would you even do with that kind of coin? Expand my venture. I'm sure you can imagine. Have a proper stand, with a big sign. I want a new box, too. New polishes, new brushes. And, if I've enough coin left, I'll buy a share in a launderer's. Get waste water for free. Hmm. <laughs> Got it all planned out. I should think so. Capital is all I require. All right. Let's see if we can't figure something out.
That's not even worth the spit I'd need to use to discuss it. It's not quite... I don't know... Ah! See? I knew we'd clinch it! Guess I can agree to that. A thousand thanks! I shan't forget it! Now to the matter at hand. I know the fellow you seek, though I don't know his name. A steady patron. Gets his boots cleaned every few days. He's very good to me. Always pays me a premium. Know where I might find him? No, but you could wait here. Perhaps he'll stop by. Don't have the time for that. Sure you don't know where to find him? Or maybe notice which direction he came from? When I clean boots, sir, I do not look up to see where folk come from. I clean. It seems you're having a rough go of it. Oh, you're here. Feeling better? I am, thank you. The local necropolis, the air does wonders for me. Now, if I might intercede, I dare say I've the right question to ask. Young man, do you see this vial? One drop added to your boot polish will help you wipe even the most encrusted boot clean as the dome of St. Lebioda's Cathedral. With it, you will serve three times as many patrons at a fraction of the effort, and piles more coin. I am prepared to give you this vial, if you tell me where the man we seek lives. Uh, but you won't hurt him, will you? The gentleman's art, true, but he's kind. In point of fact, he's a friend. Yet we had a falling out of sorts and would like to straighten matters out. I leave his boots at the door of a house near the port. The door is red. But I do not know if the gentleman lives there. Worth checking. Might happen on a lead. Would you let me scrape the dirt off your kickers before you go? With all due respect, sirs, your boots could stand a cleaning. Thank you. Perhaps later. It's no laughing matter. Handled that kid pretty well. Finding the right approach. That's the trick to dealing with children. Mm, yeah, saw that. Meaning, the right thing to bribe them with. We've no time to lose. It's not far from what the lad said. Sure hope we don't scare him off. Red door. One the boot black mentioned. Gotta break it down. You might just as well stand out in the street, pound on a drum and holler, Detlaf, I'm coming for you. A bit more finesse, I implore you. Let's hear your idea. Give me a moment. Nice. Ever consider becoming a burglar? Skill like that had come in awful handy. I considered it briefly, but ultimately concluded it would be terribly dull. Come. Let's look around. Old toy. No use to anyone. Shame. Must have brought someone joy sometime. Hmm. Somebody fixed this recently. I find these puppets rather disturbing. No 
no dust mark. Somebody moved this here recently. Disturbing. Sometimes I think I might end up like one of these toys. Hmm, somebody fixed this recently. Attic, let's go. So this is his nest. Need to look around. Ed Lavander Eretain, you do not know us, but we know you to be a vampire. We know also of your weakness for the wench they call Renoed. Now you know this. We shall chain her down and let rats feed on her. We shall flay the skin from her flesh. Yet you can save her. You need but travel to Beauclair, where you shall slay five men in the manner we prescribe. You must complete the killing in three days. Fail, and the next letter you receive will contain a memento of your failure. Your beloved's finger. There you have it. Proof positive Detlav killed not of his own accord. Blackmailer sunk his claws into it. Any idea what it could be? Detlaf have any enemies? Indeed. Detlaf gains foes occasionally, but they never live long. One might have managed to evade him. Possible in theory, but I know of none. It would have to be someone devilishly dangerous. As you well know, having faced Detlaf yourself, whoever it is, it is someone new. Who's Renawed? His one-time lover. The sole human woman with whom he was very close. Because she accepted him. With her aid and care, he found a place for himself in this hostile world. She began the work that I strive to continue. Ever meet her? Never had the pleasure, alas. She deserted him a time before he came around to save me. Though he always claimed she'd gone missing. Take it you have your doubts. I know humans better than he does. Their capacity to be disloyal, dishonest. I also know she took her things. Not something one associates with the kidnapped, or those who disappear against their will. I'll save you the trouble of asking. No, I don't know why she left. I can, however, hazard a guess that Detlaf grew angry one day, showed another, more monstrous side. Detlaf's anger could frighten anyone off. Though, most who see it get no chance to flee. Dedlov have trouble letting go, accepting that she'd left him? Is that so hard to believe? Do you know no humans who've struggled with just such a thing? And Dedlov is so much more emotional than most humans. Not only was she his beloved, his lover, his mate, she was a member of his pack. And one never leaves one's pack voluntarily. Dedlof ever try to find her? I mean, if she was that important, higher vampires have their ways, all kinds. Should have been easy as pie for him. Geralt, as you rightly noted, we are vampires, not miracle workers. He searched for months on end before giving up. Clearly, Renoued knew him all too well. Enough to cover her tracks, leave no way for him to find her. Even if Renoued did abandon him that time, Looks like someone's actually kidnapped her this time. Hard to argue with that. And hard to foresee what he's prepared to do to free her, get her back. He's prepared to kill, that's clear. As would you be for Yennefer. He kills, for he cares for her deeply. And that blood, those individuals, they mean nothing to him. Yeah, I get it now. He's out to rescue a female from his pack. Exactly. Right, so someone's blackmailing him. We know that. Still have no idea who. Need to look around some more. Tools were used recently. Tetlov unwind by fixing toys between murders. Really now, Geralt, must you? Indeed. I'm not 
not certain why, but it reminds me of home. Our true home from before the conjunction of spheres. Look, slips of paper, name on each. Count Crespi, Count Dulac, Milton de Peyrac Peyron, Count de Lacroix. Detloff's victims, one and all. But that's not his hand. Must have come from whoever wrote the letter. All of it written using the same ink. See the color? Ink was dyed with cinnabarite. Rare mineral, pretty much found only in... Nazaire. But I fear it means very little. Anyone could have imported such ink. Fair enough. Still worth remembering. Look, this slip is stained. With wine. Not much to go on either. Especially not in Beauclair. Perhaps. Yet perhaps also worth remembering. Let's sum up what we know. Seems Detlaf's being blackmailed. Someone's been feeding him his victims' names. All noted down using one and the same Nazari ink. And not in his handwriting. Not much. But enough to ascertain Detlaf's innocence, clearly. Actually, it is. Detloff's being manipulated. Some lunatics turned him into a tool, making him kill. So it would seem. But this illuminates a path of action for us. We must find Renowit. Render the blackmail senseless. The lunatic or ticks will thus lose hold on Detloff. That's one idea. Hmm. Could be worth a shot. But what about Detloff? He gonna go on killing while I'm out searching for his lover? He will not. I shall convince him to stay his hand. Assure him you're a friend seeking to help. I'll await him here. He's sure to return sooner or later. Think he'll listen? He will. I'll await with you, maybe. No. He'll sense you from a mile off. Simply fail to appear. I'd better stay alone. You must trust me on this. Fine. Need to report to the Duchess first. So be it. We'll await you here. Detlaf and I both. Nothing to see here. Move along. Ah. Rump, right and rosy. <laughs> it always gives me. <laughs> In fact, I wonder if you would your place in Texas at all. Ah! The palace is secure. Geralt of Rivia, Master Witcher. I was not mistaken. You arrived and trouble followed soon after. Step aside. Got a matter for the Duchess. At last, Witcher. We've been on tenterhooks. Did you catch Milton's killer? Case is more serious than we thought. The beast? I couldn't kill it. Didn't manage. We sent you after a monster, and you return with nothing? We are very disappointed. Situation's not quite that simple. Beast's a powerful vampire. Ha! <laughs> Is this a problem? Is it too much for a witcher? A monster slayer? But everyone knows how to end a vampire. Draw him by trick into sunlight. Or arm yourself with ample garlic and drive a stake through its heart. Garlic's useless against vampires. Sun and stakes don't hurt him either. Those methods? Pure invention. Only work in legends and fables. And Buckthorn? When I was a child, Grandmama Ademarta always claimed Buckthorn drives off vampires. Silver sword's your best option for keeping them at bay. But it won't get the job done, because only a higher vampire can truly kill another of its kind. Excuses. Ha! Your grace, I shall assemble a batu. Bring the matter to its end at once. 
The Witcher need but tell us where to find this monster. Go ahead. Send them to their death. Certain death. To a lone Witcher, perhaps. To forty of my men-at-arms, but another skirmish. Forty, fifty, a hundred? Doesn't matter. Won't make any difference against him. You have not seen my guardsmen in action. Can they fight fog? Hit a target that moves faster than the wind? How? What creature can do such things? Creatures like this one. Higher vampires, we call them. Each one's a little different. Unique or exceptional, you might say. Some transform into giant bats. Others communicate with animals, command them. Yet all are still brainless beasts. Dead wrong. Thinking of lesser vampires. Alps, Ekimaras, Catacans, for instance. They're ruled by instinct, sure. Attack anything that smells of blood. Higher vampires? They think. They employ reason. Monsters driven by reason. A curious contention. What then do you intend to do? It's way beyond being some monster. This is a powerful being that's walked the world for centuries. Tja, impossible. If so great is their power, why have they not killed or enslaved us all? Don't usually meddle in our matters. Mostly stay out of our way because they don't care about humans one way or the other. And they do not fear we shall wipe them out one day. <laughs> They'd probably be pretty amused if you asked them that. They're well aware of their strength. Then what can we do? Do you have a plan? Try to talk to him. That's our best bet. I cannot believe this. Her grace summons a witcher to kill a monster. Instead, he wishes to chat with it. <laughs> know what I'm doing. His lover was kidnapped. He's being blackmailed. Blackmailed? Be so kind as to explain how a vampire might be blackmailed. Higher vampires? They're like us, motivated by emotions, not instinct. Not only are they intelligent to an extreme, they're emotionally... rich. Capable of feeling many things, even love. This one fell in love with a woman, a human. And he'll do anything to keep her from harm. You do not, I trust, suggest we let Milton's killer go free. Or wait until it murders again. We must render it harmless as quickly as possible. Which is why that's my aim now, to prevent further attacks. Vampires only have the problem. Blackmailers at fault chiefly. Kidnap the woman to control the vampire. And what do you propose to do? I'll find the blackmailer, free the vampire's lover. You were to destroy him, not help him. No one else should die. That's most important. As soon as the woman's safe, he'll have no more reason to kill. Hmm. I admit to being swayed, Witcher. You may be right. Do you know anything about the blackmailer? Got one lead. A few scraps of paper. Blackmailer wrote the names of the vampire's victims on them. One of them stained. A drop of wine, looks like. So damn little to go on. You've no idea how wrong you are, my dear. Send for the Ducal Sommelier. Hop, hop! In Tucson, wine is sacred. Here there is no such thing as a drop of wine, or stains therefrom. They are stains from a drop of Estest, Ervelus, Fiorano. Your Grace wished to see me? Witcher, show him the paper scrap. Benoit, can you determine which wine made this stain? Mmm. Mmm, yes. Yes. The, the west bank of the saint Latour. That, that, that's rather obvious. Aged in barrels of Beauclair oak. Hue, deep burgundy. Clarity, high. It's simple. saint Real. The 1269 vintage. That's... That's impossible. 
The wine is produced at Castel Ravello, especially and exclusively for the ducal table. Perhaps some son real was stolen. We must go to the vineyard, see if there's not been an incident. Saint Real? Never heard of it. It's highly unlikely you've ever had a chance to partake of it. As I said, it is only ever served to the ducal family. Didn't stop it from ending up on that scrap of paper. Unless your grace's sommelier is mistaken. In matters of wine, Benoit is never mistaken. If he says it's Saint Real, it is Saint Real. We must ride to Castel Ravello at once. Discover what has happened. Wait. Your Grace wants to go with me? Out of the question. I hope you do not suppose we will sit on our ducal hiney and do nothing while our duchy is in grave danger. Your Grace, what you propose is far too dangerous. The Witcher should go alone. It pleases me to see you gentlemen finally agree on something. But I've made my decision. We shall go. Accompanied by the best possible escorts. You, Captain, and Geralt. We will travel incognito. We've no wish to give the court any reason to gossip. For the duration of this mission, I release you from your obligation to adhere to court protocol. In short, from now on, I am Anna Henrietta, not Your Grace. Yes, Your Grace. Uh, Witcher, are you ready? Yeah, ready to go. Excellent. Give me a moment. I must don something more appropriate and concealing. Then we will be off. Have you ever faced its sort before? I have. How did it end? Did you kill it? Didn't have to fight him. Hadn't killed anyone. Have you ever heard of anyone defeating such a vampire? Know of a man who defeated one, sure. But he didn't manage to kill it. Ultimately, only another vampire can kill a vampire. We must help! Stay back, Your Grace! We shall see to this! Back, you beast! Be gone! Hey, save us! Done for. Fortunate, Thank you. By. You saved our lives. Hooray! Let's go. Tell me more about this vineyard, Castel Ravello. It's the best in all Tucson. An old master of the winemaking trade runs it, Fabricio. He trustworthy? He's held his post for years. There's never been a problem. Till now. I wish to know your thoughts, Geralt. The Sonreal stain, how did it wind up on the paper? Is someone from the vineyard blackmailing the vampire? Could be a servant. Could be the steward. Could be the wine was just stolen from the estate. We shall know when we arrive. It's not far now. Long live Duquesa Anna Henrietta. Captain de la Tour! 
We did not expect any visitors from the palace. How are affairs at court? Doubtless you've heard of the Beast of Beauclair. Well, we've our hands full. Especially since the rogue last attacked in the palace gardens. I trust her illustrious highness was not harmed. Kind of you to ask, Master Fabricio. I am well. Your... Your Grace? We were not warned. I shall order the Salon prepared at once. That won't be necessary. As you can see, we are not here on an official visit. Naturally. Might I ask then what has brought you to Castel Ravello? Came to see you. Got some questions. In this land, it is seen as polite to introduce oneself before asking any questions. This is Geralt of Rivia, a witcher. He has come to Toussaint on my personal invitation. Which is to say... Which is to say I expect you to treat him with the utmost respect. Of... of course, Your Grace. Did you hear that, witcher? Fabricio will be delighted to answer your every question. Want to talk about San Real? I am at your service. The San Real. How many vineyard workers have access to it? One might say only I do. Not like you make the wine all alone. At least a dozen others work here. I see you've little notion how wine is made. Grapes travel a long road before they become Saint Real. The workers assist me only to the stage of fermentation. I see to the maceration personally and let no one near the fat. Workers, again, assist me during barreling, but then I seal the aging barrels myself, each and every one. The wine lies in the cellar, gains character. Once this process is complete, it becomes Sonreal. And as it happens, only I have the key to the cellar in question. Who hauls the barrels to the palace? We've our own garrison. Guards who have served here for years and would answer with their heads for the wine. We'll not get anywhere asking questions, I see. It's a waste of time. Your Grace? How am I to understand this? Master Fabricio, we have proof someone's gained access to Sonreal. Someone who should not have, which means one of two things. Either you lie to our face, or you are an idiot who has had wine stolen from under his nose and not even realized it. In either case, you shall answer for it. But, but... Silence! And listen. I shall inspect the barrels in person, thus giving you time to reflect. When I return, I expect to hear answers. Remind me, where is this Sonreal stored? In... in the main cellar, around the corner. I'll show you. I shall find it. Give me the key to the cellar and wait here. Oh, of course, Your Grace. Here it is. Come, Witcher. We shall wait here, Master Fabricio. What if Fabricio's blackmailing the vampire? Considered that? He has his flaws, but I would never suspect him of such a thing. He's been very loyal. He owes all he has to me. His father... Frequent away the family fortune. He left his son an encyclopedic knowledge of wine. That is all. Fabricio lived as a beggar until I appointed him steward of Castel Ravello. Only then did he come into his own. Let us see if all the barrels are present. Here's the inventory ledger. Mm, 
Mariner's log. Fermentation completed with no complications. Tapped above sediment line. Here it is, barreling. Hmm, everything lines up at first glance. Neatly and thoroughly documented. Then we must follow our other lead. Benoit said the stain came from the 1269 vintage. Let's find it. Est Est. Think everyone and their mother's heard of this wine. Among the best in the world. Castel Ravello is famous for Excellent wine. You've good taste. Got Pamino over here. I have a feeling we'll find something awry. San Real. 1270 vintage. That's the wrong year. Keep looking. Are dated 1268. Close, but not quite the right year. Right here, 1269. What now? Let's see if any barrels are empty. Wanna open them? For now, a knock will suffice. If you hear a hollow thud, we will have found what we seek. Looks like all the barrels are full. Dead end, I'm afraid. Full they are. The question is, are they full of San Real? Grab a tap and a hammer. We shall open them one by one and taste. Ready. We can start. Ready. Step aside. So? Mm, slightly smoky, strongly tannic, definitely son real. <laughs> Revolting, bitter. Plonk! Could have gone sour while aging. Impossible. This is not wine. This is contaminated refuse that should never have made it into a barrel. The fact that it did was no accident, I'm sure. Master Fabricio, let's see what he has to say about it. Master Fabricio, I am very disappointed. But, Your Grace, I... You are a step away from losing your head. 
Speak the truth and you might yet keep it. I... I admit it. I... I, I sold a barrel of Sonreal. I beg you to forgive me. Why did you do it? I couldn't resist. The sum they offered it was enormous. I gave in. Is what I provide not enough? I wished to buy back my family's estate. For here, nothing is truly mine. I've a roof over my head, ample food to eat, but what is a nobleman without land of his own? I shall tell you everything, if you agree to show me mercy. Who'd you sell the wine to? A few weeks passed at the pheasantry, a rich nobleman approached me. He, he called himself a diplomat, well-connected at court. He suggested we embark on an enterprise. Some of his clients had offered dizzying sums for even a drop of Sonreal. He was to serve as intermediary. This man's name? He never revealed it. He was tall, black-haired, and spoke with a foreign lilt. He claimed to hail from Sintra. I've no Sintrian aristocrat at court. Really thought nobody'd find out. I was a fool, very foolish. I beg you, Your Grace, you must forgive me. Wine itself. How'd you hand it over? We met under the cover of darkness in the ruins of Fort Astre. A dozen or so men came to collect. Armed men. The kind that stink of trouble. I had hauled the barrel there. They transferred it to their cart, and we went our separate ways. That's it? At the last you ever saw of them? They... that is to say... A few days passed. A messenger arrived. He said they wished to buy another barrel and... Well, I've prepared it. Have it ready to deliver. That's enough. Know all we need to know. Your Grace, I beg your forgiveness. Get out of my sight. Captain, have your men take Master Fabrizio to the dungeon. He must answer for his crime. High treason the charge. What now, Witcher? We set a trap. Need to catch the wine thieves. Sintrian Noble could be our blackmailer. Next, transport. I'll take it to Fort Astra. Damien and his soldiers will cover me. For once, I agree with you. We will do as you say. Let me know when you are ready. See no reason to wait. Let's get going. We will set out now. Position ourselves before you arrive. You take the cart and meet us there. Fine. When the handoff begins, watch for my signal.
just me, or did we agree you'd wait for my signal? That was the plan, but... Great shot. Good thing you reacted. Can't say how that would have ended otherwise. At your service. It was a good fight. We managed to capture one of the scoundrels. Let's ask him a few questions. Come on. Witcher, a moment. I was wrong about you. Well, had no reason to trust me, and I didn't do much to change that. True. You are not the most endearing of men. At any rate, I see the effort you put forth. And I appreciate it. Let us go to her grace. She awaits nearby. Not at all surprised. Expected she'd want to oversee this personally. The Master's eye fattens the cough. You're beginning to understand that, I see. This prisoner of yours, bring him to me. We must ask him some questions. <laughs> Captain, do the honors. Who sent you? His name is Dog. They say he plowed your mother. Once again, who sent you? Your nun's lover. They call him... Wait. He doesn't wish to speak. He needed. I can think of several other ways he can be helpful. I'm certain the Witcher will need bait to lure the beast of Beauclair. What? what? Usually only take measures like that as a last resort, but in this case, think I can make an exception. Do as you deem fit. He is all yours. Captain, have your men find me a strong rope. Kind that won't snap when we hang this fellow from a tree. R rope Live bait. Great for monsters, provided they catch the scent of its blood. But I'll see to that. What? No. Cracky, no! Don't let him! Stop screaming. Save your strength. Got a long night ahead of you. No! Don't let him! I I'll talk! Barrels. Where were you gonna take them? I don't know. Captain, need that rope after all. I truly don't know. Hornet's the leader. Only he ever knew where to go. But he lies over there, dead. That one. The first barrel went to a warehouse at the port. But where this one was bound, I don't know. I, I speak true. You must believe me. Who hired you? He... he'll kill me! Ought to be worried about me right now. Who is he? Go on, man. Spit it out. The Sintrian. That is what they call him. I've never seen him, but I know he mustered the man for this caper. That's what they said, that we were working for the Sintrian. I don't know anything else. I swear it. Take him away. Throw him in the dungeon. He shall await trial there. Captain, we ride to town. Gather your men and seek out the Sintrian. Someone else must have seen him, must know of him. Yes, Your Grace. I'll report to the palace as soon as I learn anything. I shan't return to the palace. Our mission has not yet ended. The Witcher and I will await you at the guard post near the port. Let's go to town. He's late. Relax, he'll come. There's something I'd like to know. How can you be so damned calm? Side effect of my mutations. We witchers rarely get the jitters. What if something has happened to him? Captain seems like a man who can take care of himself. Perhaps he can, but this Sintrian appears to be no common bandit. 
He managed to steal ducal wine from under my guardsman's noses. We only learned of it through a fortunate coincidence. And it was he who specified the victims for the vampire. One must be exceptionally confident to blackmail such a monster. Still don't know this Sintrian's behind the kidnapping and blackmail. Might have just handled the theft of the wine. Even if it's so, he then sold the wine to the blackmailers. As I see it, that makes him an accomplice. Need to find the Sintrian, whether or not he's responsible for the murders. Even if none of it's his doing, he could still know our blackmailer's identity. Besides, it's one thing to know who ordered the killings. Other thing entirely and just as important is why they... Someone's coming. Captain, why so long? We expected you hours ago. This Centrion does not work alone. We are fighting an organization, not one man. Bandits attacked us, not a small force either. One of my boys has a broken arm, another a shattered knee, lamed for life. And the word on the street is there's a hefty bounty on your head, Geralt. Used to it. Not the first time I've been hunted. Must you always? Now, the port warehouse where the wine was delivered, we identified it, then learned who had hired it out. This proved to be a beggar, a stand-in. We found him. He admitted all. A man had paid him to sign the lease, a man he met while begging outside the pheasantry. There, fate lent us a hand. A waitress recalled spilling wine on a nobleman who spoke with a Cintrian accent. What did he look like? Her description was not helpful. Handsome, well-dressed, with a beard. No distinguishing marks. This could be anyone. But she remembered his female companion very well, as she recognized her. On the Cintrian's arm was Cecilia Bellant. The singer? I've heard of her. She said to be gifted, fairy. The same. We went to her home immediately. Cecilia was not there, but we questioned her servants. A chambermaid claimed Cecilia is to meet a Cintrian gentleman tonight. She'd invited him to a reception mounted by the Mandragora. The Mandragora? What's that? A club. An affiliation of local artists. Painters, sculptors, troubadours and dancers. Never heard of it. They exude a uh, mystique. Consciously, I think. Behaving like an exclusive cabal. Artistic elites. Every now and again they mount soirees. Only wealthy patrons are invited. All arrive in elaborate masks, then drink and flirt. Gotta nab the Cintrian. Seems we have to go to that get-together. You read my mind, Witcher. I shall gather my men, surround the establishment. Not a mouse will squeeze through. Out of the question. If the Cintrian truly does have men about the city, he will find out and escape once again. Duchess is right. Need to be careful. Best go there, blend in with the crowd. Precisely what we shall do. We, your grace. Geralt and I. In that sort of company, the Witcher could use my help. Where's the event gonna be held? The Mandragora always assembles at the same place. A residence in Oatville. It's a very distinguished district. Geralt, you must don appropriate attire. Then meet me in Oatville, in Mountebank Alley. The Cintrian. But we'll get him.
<laughs> there was a time when knights would simply drive off that sort of rattle. No one gives a hoot about us poor folk. There's no to be done about that. It's a crime. <laughs> You're from the North. That's painfully clear. Excuse me? There is no excuse. There is but the need to outfit you anew. My salon stands open. Please come in. All jests aside, let me see what you got in your wardrobe. I'm more than willing, sir. surprise me. you to have such a sense of style. Not all bad. Nothing like a budding artist, of course, but... Just one other detail. Here, put it on. A mask? All who attend the Mandragora Soiree wear them. If you have one on, no one asks who you are. Any idea why they wear masks? Likely because they imagine it oh so very romantic and mysterious. The truth is far simpler. This way no one can tell which drunken aristocrats are pinching the performers. Let's go. Soirée's started. Mm-hmm. Wise of you to hide your weapons. 
They'd not have let us in otherwise, that's certain. How do we find the Sintrian? Have you a plan? Key is not to spook him. Need to ask after his partner, Cecilia, first. Less likely to raise suspicions. As soon as we find her, we find him. Right. Right you are. We must proceed with caution. Come, it's our turn. Madame, Monsieur, an extraordinary pleasure to welcome you to the Mandragora's soiree. Tonight, I particularly recommend you direct your attention to the performances prepared by artists of our community. Tell us about these performances. This evening, the Mandragora has the honor to present three superb displays of artistry. The first was a concert by Cecilia Belont, a singer whose voice, were it stone, would surely be a diamond. Sadly, Mademoiselle Cecilia has sung. Shame. You would have loved to hear her. Uh, luckily, you are in time to see the great Calesti, a master of visual illusions, come to us from far off Afir. Visual illusions? Interesting. And the third artist? Uh, the third and fourth, for they are a duo, are the Tuven brothers, presenting their newest pantomime. We were really hoping to meet Cecilia Ballant. You are admirers, I surmise. I'm certain you will have ample opportunity to converse with her. It cannot be easy to identify anyone in this crowd. Perhaps you could help us find her. Hmm... I don't know where she is now, but I can give you a clue. Let's hear it. Seek the Kaviri Orchid. Meaning? Cecilia wears one in her hair. You shall recognize her easily by the orchid. Well, well. Dandelion's always complaining about artists being poor as temple mice. The residence belongs to none of them. They are guests here. Oriana, she owns this. Woman in the black dress, there on the balcony. Got her. Doesn't wear a mask? It would be pointless. All would know her anyway. Kuviri Orchid, let's look for it. If we find Cecilia, we'll find the Sintrian. Go on, Geralt, be bold. Show us the artist in you. Good folk! Yet another soul longing to express its creative side. Well, you are not an art? Shh, silence. The artist must pause. I got it! It's the Soretor! It's not a landscape, you pleb. It's a manifestation of the man's soul. Blue blood is all I see. Should you tire of these hues, drop them in the pail and uh, quiet the lonely color. Splendid! The sky over Toussaint before the storm. Or a deeply internalized fear of intimacy. Should you tire that green, lush and verdant as a field of fire? To vines and to vines! requires great precision. Gods! Scarlet, crimson, ox blood. Icy lips, full sensual hard lips. Composition takes shape. Yes. Should you tire of the seams, drop them in the pail and grab a different array. Voila! Fine. Now, allow me a moment to ponder. My appraisal? The painting depicts spiritual dualism. The continual battle between good and evil. And defiance. <laughs> oh yes, that's him all right. 
Good versus evil. The dualistic nature of man. And defiance. It must be so much like this, I tell you. Such exception true. My Absinthe, the preferred hooch of artists. Careful, it packs a pretty powerful punch. I've built up a pretty powerful resistance. This painting, it's rather vicious. It's very, let's go. Your voice is an amazing effort to understand. It's a metaphor of the constant struggle for power and influence. What else will they think of? If they can't agree, they will cut the line. It's good to see you, man. Rage, we are busy. We wish to be alone. Please, leave. We are busy. Look at the mage. I believe he's casting spells. Yeah, we'll see. Elecheshepa, Sarapa, Durendum, Kalabatishta, Sabeshkehi, Beshkehi, Ka! The dolphins never suspected you believed in such things. God. It's all about two things. Coin pretentious. I was prepared for all sorts of criticism, but <gasps> pretentious. Flower. Of course it is. A Koviri orchid lends just the right contrast to her complexion. Need to talk to your model. It'll only take a minute. To me? Lie still. You may speak, but for love's sake, do not move. Wow. Impressive portrait. I know the style, the stroke. This is Dorian Villes. The gracious lady has heard of me? I... I've heard Anna Henrietta herself wished you to paint her portrait once. Ah, at one point the palace chamberlain even wrote to me, but alas, ultimately refused my terms. What was the matter? When he learned I only ever paint nudes, he suffered all contact. He said he would not dare offend her illustrious highness with such a proposition. I've always longed to paint her such a shame. I think... you may still get your chance. We came here to meet you, specifically. To meet me? But... why? Centrian Noble you came here with. Wanted to ask you about him. Cintrian Noble? Ah! You must think I'm Cecilia. Orchid uh, confused me. I told you not to move! As she concluded her performance, Cecilia tossed the flower into the crowd. I caught it. But I did see the nobleman. Really like to talk to him. What did he look like? Like many here. Tall, dark, masked. Know where he might be now? He gave Cecilia a small gift. 
a heart-shaped box. Then they strolled off together towards the refreshment tables. Excuse me, madame, monsieur, I cannot work like this. You must leave now. Love letter penned on a napkin. Look. Oh, my amour, my sunbeam flittering across the firmament of my life. We must throw off the <sighs> Treacly refuse. Either fist tag, artist's way of numbing their existential pain. I do not even wish to comment. Color Empty heart shaped box. Cecilia must have left it behind. It looks like it held a flask of perfume. A gift from the Cynthrian, I imagine. Scent still hangs in the air. Someone Let's left their it. loot behind. Looks a little like dandelions. This was scratched. Someone beat him with it once. The great one. But he's a dancer. That's to say the other one. His brother. Even, because the right cuff seems somewhat higher to me. Sorry, only artists in the Mandragora allowed. Come, we must consider what to do. I... I'd recognize that voice anywhere. You... you must be mistaking me for someone else. I served 15 years in the palace. Your Grace... I'd not mistake you for anyone. Shh. Not so loud. We are here incognito, on state business. Yes, Your Grace. How may I serve? I hope we can count on your discretion. Of course. I shall be silent as the grave. Looking for Cecilia Bellant, seen her? She's in her dressing room, where she went with a nobleman. They clearly were drawn to each other. What did the man look like? Tall, broad-shouldered, a black beard peeping out from under his mask, and he spoke with a foreign accent, a drawl of sorts. That must be him. We must get to the dressing room, quickly. Yes, Your Grace. I'll take you. No, stay here. Anyone tries to flee, you stop them. Understood. Quickly, upstairs. Cecilia. No pulse. We're too late. He... He slit her throat. The brute. Mm. Didn't go out the door. Guard would have noticed. Might still be somewhere here. You must find him before he harms another. I shall alert Oriana. At once. She should bring her soiree to a close. Shouldn't split up. Get out, I will be fine. Go after that rogue. I shall fetch help. Hmm. Killed her, then went out on the balcony. Hmm. Killed her, then went out on the balcony. Bloody handprint. Mm -hmm. It's his. Tore down the door. Made a platform. Clever. Must be pretty 
strong, too. Broke the flower pot when moving the door, then stepped in the soil. Footprints made by soiled boots. Mm, must have climbed this ladder. sank to the floor. Links of a snap chain. Jewel must have been on it. Precious stone. Bloody fingerprint on it. Thief came for this. Must have. Tiny chain links next to it. From a snapped necklace? Seems there was a struggle. Jewelry box. Locks busted. Picked open, probably. Blood stains. Sconce is bent, smeared with blood. Someone try to grab it. Looks valuable, but it's not what he came for. Empty inkwell. Knocked over, turned toward the room. Hunting knife, richly ornamented. Used during the fight, probably. Canvas is cut. Somebody took a knife to the painting, looks like. Blood on the window frame. Someone climb out, fall out. Jewel was in the box, it seems. Centrian tried to steal it, but someone got in his way. They fought, struggled, that's clear. Ended with one of them flying out the window. Fall had to have killed them. Jewel's still here, though, so our Centrian must have been the flyer. So, this is the tracker. A witcher, yes? Indeed, this is him. We found the body together. Then he set off in pursuit of the killer. And ended up here, but I've only found evidence of a fight. Seems the Centrians killed his last. Finally failed this time. Shame it happened too late for Cecilia. Poor girl. Always told her she chose her males badly. But I would never have suspected she could arrive with a murderer. I'll alert the staff. Have them see to her body at once. Meanwhile, we should sit. I will tell you everything in full detail. I caught him red-handed, attempting to burgle, rifling through my possessions. What did you do? Summon the guards? Oh, there was no time. I feared he'd escape, refused to give him the chance. He stood with his back to me, so I attacked. He struck his head on a picture frame as we struggled. He was bleeding, dazed, and then he drew a knife. Everything happened very quickly then. I knocked the weapon out of his hand and pushed him hard. He fell out of the window. Just so. None too wise picking a fight with an armed robber. Why? Because I'm a woman, in a frock rather than plate. I can take care of myself, I assure you. A hairpin might look like mere ornament, but plunged into an eye, it can be as effective as a blade. Claim the man was trying to rob you when you walked into the room? Yes. He stood over my dressing table, pouring through my jewelry. Mm-hmm. After this is my guess. Picked it up while searching. Why, that's the heart of Toussaint. Oriana, how did you ever come to have it? I bought it, many years ago, from a young woman. Jewel seems important. Why? The heart is an heirloom. 
It belonged to my family for years. Then it disappeared. I didn't think we would ever recover it. Seems someone is very determined to find it. The thief left his tool bag behind. Found this drawing inside it. Look. The heart of Toussaint. Representation's pretty faithful. Centrian must have been on a job. Got very clear instructions what to look for. So... So it is not him we seek, but his employer. Is this the only evidence we found? Also happened on the weapon he attacked Oriana with. Hunting knife. Used to skin game. Got an emblem on its hilt. This crest is used by the Lords of Duntine. The present master of the castle is a passionate hunter. Our next lead, perhaps. Duntine. Remember the place. Abandoned ruin just a few years ago. More recently, the family's last heir, Roderick, returned to his ancestral seat and restored the castle. Know any more about this Roderick? His grandfather was an advisor to Queen Ademarta. The family received those lands as a grant for his service. Roderick is quite the recluse. He avoids society, preferring the company of a small team of knights. Though the latter term is imprecise, as they seem more akin to vandals with crests on their shields. Oriana, everything we discussed here? Hope you'll keep it to yourself. Counting on it, in fact. Word gets out he, uh, failed in his attempt to steal the jewel. His employer could run. We need to proceed cautiously. Discretion is in the interest of us all. I'll not ask what this is about, just as I expect not to be troubled about it again. By anyone. <clears throat> Forgive me, Madam Oriana, but might I have a word? You must excuse me a moment. Oriana, any thoughts? Few make me feel awkward, but in her presence, I sense anxiety, discomfort. The drawing. It's on the same type of paper the victims' names were written on. Drawn with the same ink, too. Seems the work of our blackmailers. Who were not only behind the beast's murders, but also stole the Son Real and sought to steal the heart of Toussaint. Look, the wine, the jewel, both tied to you intrinsically. Coincidence? Not something I'm willing to believe. Worried about one thing. That somewhere at the end of this scheme, plan might call for an attempt on your life. It... it could be something else altogether. My sister, Siana, might be among the schemers. She left court when we were children. My parents banished her from the duchy. I've not seen her since. What did your sister do to get banished? Siana was... cursed. Parents run afoul of some mage? No. She was born at an inopportune moment. They said she was touched by the curse of the Black Sun. Geralt, is it true? Can an individual be evil because they were born during the wrong lunar phase? Could be the case. Could also be because they were treated like lepers from birth. Isolated, prodded, ostracized. Couldn't have had it easy, Siana. She... She was angry at the whole world. She felt inferior, felt pain, though she masked this with confidence, arrogance even. She could also be cruel at times. I recall one such situation. She persuaded Cedric the Coolbert that she could see the future in her dreams. We were children and Cedric's brother was smitten with me. It was an innocent childhood crush. Siana knew of it. She told Cedric of a dream she had had, that he would die at the hands of his own brother. Cedric stole his father's sword and killed his brother. She destroyed two lives with a prank. 
Cedric mourns to this day. In the end, they forced her to leave the palace. A decade passed, more. I've missed her terribly since. Think your sister might be involved? Why? You see, I recall her always being rather possessive, throwing jealous fits if I had something she didn't. Here, yeah, that's normal for sisters. Rivalry. True. I suppose I gave as good as I got. There are times I miss that very much. The wine, its theft was the first clue. That's very much like her. She always did enjoy stealing my toys, but I grew almost certain when I saw the heart of Toussaint. Siana received it from father as a gift. At a time when my parents thought of her as but an ill-behaved little girl, someone wanted some of my wine. The same someone ordered our family jewels stolen, or recovered. It's my sister. It must be. A fallen princess satisfying whims, going after lost luxuries? Hmm. Could be right. Your mission has gained new import. You must go to Dun Tyne, and if Siana is there, you must find her. No matter what she did, she is not to be harmed in any way, shape, or form. You must make sure of that. I'll find her if she's there. I hope you do. I very much wish to talk to her. Sister to sister. Your Grace, Geralt, I'd like to introduce... Regis! What a surprise! I had no idea you were in Beauclair. And this is... Uh, my very dear friend, Detlaf van der Eretane, an arrival from Nazaire. We are lending our combined resources to the Witch's Hunt. Ah, yes. Splendid. But why are you here at Oriana's? They came to pay me a surprise visit, so I invited Regis in for a glass of wine. We've known each other for... Ooh, ages. Literally. Witcher, I hear you know Regis too. Even that you are friends. Few I can rely on like I can on Regis. Kinda hoping he thinks the same of me. Curious. It seems opposites really do attract. Don't be fooled, dear. Geralt has many merits. He merely hides them from the world very diligently. Mm -hmm. You said you're both aiding him with his contract. It involves the Beast of Beauclair, I suspect. Master Witcher, maybe you could satisfy my curiosity. What's it like going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a monster, knowing you've only two options, to kill or be killed? Despite what you might have heard, I don't lunge at every monster I see, sword in hand. Talking gets the job done for some. Hmm. I wonder what a monster might have to say to you. It might want to apologize. My word. For what might a monster wish to apologize to a witcher? For killing. Though at times there is no choice when loved ones are at risk and require protection. Same as humans. Put them in that situation, they'll kill too. You understand this. It must be why you and Regis are friends. If I understand you correctly, you would rather help a monster than kill it. If possible, yeah. Or at least try. Enough about the Witcher trait for now. Regis mentioned you come from Nazaire. I spent time there as a child. Fond memories? It was wonderful. I was positively entranced by the land's fashions. Deep-cut dresses I found most fascinating. I believe we're running short on wine. I should go to the cellar, bring another bottle. Let me go. Wanna help, Regis? Know your wine a lot better than I know mine. We shall return forthwith. An exceptional conversation, don't you think? Vampires, a witcher, and the Duchess of Toussaint? My, my. Highly exceptional, Regis. Wanted to talk to you in private. You crazy bringing Detloff here? Geralt, uh, allow me to explain. No, let me explain. He's dangerous, and you are gonna watch him. But that is precisely what I'm doing. 
Detlaf believes you'll succeed in your task, and he'll not need to kill anymore. That is, not until he gets his hands on the men who kidnapped his Renner. Oriana, she really your friend? Can she be trusted? Uh, I met her years ago, before I met you, and before she settled in Beauclair. We'd not seen one another in... Uh, oh, I, I can't begin to tell you in how long. But I shall tell you all about her some other day. Guessing it's no accident you two stopped by. It would be quite some coincidence indeed. No, a dutiful little bird told us. Mm-hmm. Now listen close. Manage to learn where the blackmailers are. They're based at Duntine Castle. That's splendid news. If they are there, Renna must be there as well. Duchess expects we'll find her long-lost sister there too. Thing is, she might be involved. Could be behind the blackmailing. Do you mean to say your task now is to extract two women from the castle? Mean to say we can't breathe a word of this to Dedloff, who wants revenge above all else. Geralt, you must trust me. I've got a way with- No, Regis. Can't risk it. Gotta keep Dedloff here while I go to Duntine. Alone? Alone. That way I can make sure neither woman will come to any harm. I hope you know what you're doing. Fine. I shall see to Detlaf. Good luck, my friend. Splendidly, Detlaf. Ah, oh, I'm grateful you brought back those memories. You're back! It took you long enough. Contrary to what common folk believe, choosing a wine is not nearly as easy as it might seem. Especially a wine to be served to two exquisite ladies. Regis. Gallant as ever. I regret all the more that I shan't finish this second bottle with you. Duty calls. Your Grace, always a pleasure. I thank you for your help. It's been invaluable. Geralt, will you see me out? You have exceptional friends. This Detlaf, an intriguing man to say the least. Don't know him too well. He say much about himself? Not much, but I've a good sense of the true nature of those I meet. I'd not survive a week at court otherwise. So what's his? Sensitive, sad. He carries within him the weight of a terrible tragedy. He is a good man, but lost, which is why he comes across as grim. Didn't expect the evening to end like this. Neither did I. But I have not drawn you out for a romantic stroll. I wish to make certain you know what you are to do. Mm-hmm. Gotta go to Duntine. I've decided my guardsmen will support you. You will meet them at Count de la Croix Mill. It stands along the Saint Retour River near the Cockatrice Inn. Captain de la Tour and his men will await you there at midnight. You shall storm the castle together. Was that truly necessary? Citizens, and her nets were all the prophet's witness. A witcher? 
Don't crowd around. Go, go. Wine, wine, and look like swaddling wine. It's enough to drive you better. Unknown. Your foes have committed treason. You fight them for the good of the duchy. Captain de la Tour will give you the details. Geralt, good you're here. Ready to attack Duntine? See you already prepared a plan. Walk me through it. We have two objectives. To find her illustrious highness's sister and capture the man who blackmailed the vampire. Duntine is a modest complex. Several old buildings, a high wall around them. At the center of the enclosure stands an imposing keep, restored not long past by the elderly knight of the castle, Roderick. We mean to strike here, through the main gate, then secure the area in front of the keep by storm. How many men defend Duntine, you know? Roderick maintains a team of knights for defense. They are no army, but they could number several dozen. Also, Roderick recently took in a band of foreign mercenaries. About them we know very little. Need to hit them from both sides. You draw the defenders, keep them busy. I'll sneak in the back way, find the women, make sure they come to no harm. I'll vault over the wall as soon as you start your assault. Your plan puts you at great risk, but I sense you will handle it well. Let us go. Quick! We grab Roderick's horses and we bolt. We won't vault far if the boys out front don't hold. Not so fast. Little change of plans. He's looking to flee. Can't let him.
I see no ducals along the road. The bloody Faster! bots! What you was that? Those crates on the wagon. Surrender. <laughs> Those crates. To escape. But be careful! If you drop any, someone's here. They've breached the back wall. Come on, kill him! Go on, lads! I shall show you, rogue. <laughs> Damn company. Centrian's men, where are they? Uh, I knew. Shouldn't have let them under my roof. Where's the hostage, the woman? What? What, what do you mean? I know nothing about a hostage. Must, must be the handiwork of my guests. Where are they now? In... in the keep. Ready in their escape. There's someone with them? Woman named Siana? Of... of course. She... she convinced me to let them in. And a whole pile of trouble along with them. Where is she? Pack... packing. We were to leave together and... old fool. I'd have done anything for her. Where is she? In the keep too? It, yes, her chamber is in the tower, the top floor. What? What will become of me? Hmm. Here, press it against the wound. Should staunch the bleeding. I... I thank you.
giving you one last chance. Yield. The dead harlot got us into this. Kill him! Attack! our help. So, Witcher, this is no time to explain. Where is Renna? Expect to answer a lot of questions inside. Let us go, then. Never let them hurt me. I just waited for you to come. I... I didn't know where to look. They threatened to kill you. I... Forgive me. I failed you. Now we need only find Anna Henrietta's sister. Where should we look? Do you know? Mm-hmm. Ran into Roderick, Duntine's lord. Told me where I'd find Siana. Then speak and let's grab her. Time is short. Said she was in a room in the tower. Very one we're in right now. Which, incidentally, looks nothing like a prison cell. And just so happens there's a carafe full of wine here. Bet it's stolen Saint Real. What's your point? Stop playing dumb. I know everything. Your plan, that this was part of it. Witcher, what is this? Sorry, Dedlaf. You've been had. My friend, please. You must listen to what Geralt has to say. Renna's not her real name. This is Siana, and Siana is sister to Anna Henrietta, the Duchess of Toussaint. What? What nonsense is this? Siana was banished as a child, but it seems she trekked back here recently, moved into Duntine, and ran a Vandergild out of here. Sent a man called the Centrian to Beauclair to steal some wine for her. Wine reserved for the Ducal family. Centrian led us to her. Caught him later stealing a jewel Sian had gotten from her father as a child. <clears throat> Sorry, Dedloff. She used you. Part of her plan. Come to Tesham, 
If you do not, I will raise Beauclair to the ground. This I promise you. You've three days. I shall be waiting. He just fly off? He did not wish to act rashly. He's gone to soothe his nerves. Think he'll do it? Make good on his threat? I cannot say. He can be unpredictable when fury consumes him. I shall go to him. Come again? After what he just- You don't know Detlaf like I do. If I don't do as he says, he truly will destroy the city. He's more than capable of it. Conscience gets to you now? Better... Uh, better late than never, right? Well, it truly does seem the best option. Your Grace, we must proceed with caution. Guardsmen saw vampires here. They could still be about. Vampires or no vampires, my sister is here. Find her. Your Grace, that... Sianna, it's true. It's you. Sister, dear, what have you gotten yourself into? So concerned, I'm surprised. Is there an ounce of truth to it? You... You feel resentment. I understand. But I promise, promise we shall work through all the unfortunate matters of the past. We will discuss them later. Captain, escort Sianna to the palace. I shall meet with her as soon as we return. As you wish, Your Grace. <clears throat> and you, Witcher. You have my thanks. I cannot believe my sister was so near the whole time. Roderick of Duntyne shall answer for treason and blackmail. Roderick got duped and used, just like the vampire. Apropos, were you able to establish who kidnapped his beloved? We've discovered Siana blackmailed the vampire, ordered him to kill those men. What? What nonsense is this? She is his missing lover, staged her own abduction to force him to do her bidding. He was a tool. Whole scheme was Siana's. She was behind it. You're mistaken. You must be. This cannot be true. Your Grace, I know this vampire. What? You know him? Who is he? Detlaf. The same who so recently sat at my table and told me of Nazar. Is there anything else you've neglected to mention? A dragon living beneath Mount Gorgon, perhaps? Is anyone else here a vampire? Where is he now? Waiting for Siana. If she doesn't show up to meet him by an appointed time, he'll destroy Beauclair. He dares threaten us? Your Grace, we have three days to bring him Siana and- Not a word. You have three days to bring me his head. No more secrets. No more helping vampires. I want what I'm paying for. The head of the beast. Do you think her grace's nerves have been calmed? That rarely forgets, rarely retracts what she says. Especially when it means. Yes, well, even I must admit Dead Love's actions were highly inappropriate. Reprehensible, even. Are you upset? Why would I be? Hmm, let's see. You're returning from your hunt empty-handed. No trophy. No new lead to boast of, then pursue. Upset's just not a sensation I feel. 
ever. Mutations, remember? Mm, yes, of course. The excuse you resort to whenever you'd rather not talk about something. Observant of you. So let's change the subject. How do your employers customarily react when you fail to meet their expectations? Uh, depends. Peasants cuss me out. Merchants demand I refund their deposit, whereas nobles mostly just release their hounds. And rulers? Usually threaten me with the gallows. A most illustrious grace awaits the gentleman. Your grace, the population demands she be punished. Sion has committed terrible crimes, spilt so much blood. Another they... word, Palmerin, and I shall spill even more blood. Yours. I repeat for the last time, Siana is responsible for the death of many, true. But she is also my sister. We are bound by blood and by a shared childhood. I shall not allow her to be lynched. Your Grace, I fear the masses might rise. Storm the prison, pitchforks and torches in hand. Let them storm. They will not find her there. Siana is hidden away in a safe place. She shall await trial there until we have rid ourselves of this accursed vampire. Which, to judge by your means, has not yet come to pass. Did what we could, but... My patience is at an end, Geralt. Where is he? Where is Detlaf? Don't know. I lost his trail. Is this all you have to say? I respect your grace. All I can say is the truth. Ah. At times, I hunt foxes. Do you know how it works? The Ducal Huntsman releases the hounds. They catch the fox's scent, chase the animal down, and lead the Bachu to it. All within an hour. You, Witcher, have had a week. The aid of my most excellent knights. Yet, you have tracked absolutely nothing down. I've begun to suspect my beagles might have done a better job. Then perhaps your grace should have sent a beagle instead of a witcher after the vampire. <gasps> you tread on thin ice, witcher. Very thin. Wisdom demands you choose your words more cautiously. But to the matter at hand. Have you managed to establish anything? Your grace... It seems Siana tricked Detlaf, used him to murder the knights who escorted her into exile. We have reason to believe that... Your Grace! Vampires! What? Speak now! Vampires! Oh, they protect the city! Kept them the Latour defense the square near the boat landing, but... So many lives lost! Damn it. If it's war this death of wants, it's war he shall have. Geralt, get to work. This time I'll hear no excuses. Palmer and you... Get her out of here.
Siana failed to appear as summoned. And there. Detloff was not making idle threats. Seems not. Need to make some serious plans of our own now. It's gone too far, damn it. Regis, you mentioned there was a way to draw Detloff out. A way you've avoided resorting to so far because you thought it was too dangerous. Is that how I put it? Do forgive me, and I've misled you terribly. The word dangerous is simply a scandalous understatement in this case. Regis, another inner monologue growing out of a personal dilemma. Just tell me how to flush Detloff out, force him to meet, please. In due course. But first, Geralt, I'd like you to consider the alternative. After all, you could fulfill Detloff's demand and liberate his beloved Siana. Think Detloff still believes Siana's innocent? I believe he suspects something. He must. And he seeks to understand what happened. And for that, he's declared war on the entire duchy? What can I say? Moderation was never his strong suit. Really want to free Siana? Hand her over to Detloff? Refuse to accept you consider that wise. It's hard to believe, I know. But Detloff is not actually evil, merely impulsive. He needs but meet with her, speak with her, and he will spare the city. Hmm. So say I agree to this, because I might. Still no chance Anna Henrietta will. I do not recall ever suggesting we ask her permission. The meeting. What if it's nothing like you say? What if it goes sour, ends in a fight? Willing to guarantee Siana won't get hurt? It seems unlikely in the extreme. Didn't ask for a lecture on probability. Need a simple answer. Yes or no. I vow that not a hair on her head shall come to any harm. Got serious reservations about this plan. Not least among them, we have no idea where Siana's being held. You heard the Duchess. She's not at the prison. Hardly a reservation. More of an excuse. I'm certain you'll find her. You must merely decide you wish to. Hmm. Could ask Damien. Duchess treats him like a lapdog. Keeps him close most times. He might know something more. There, you see? I knew you'd think of something. Bravo. I trust I've dispelled your doubts, then. Not so fast. We're not done talking. How would I go about luring Detloff out of hiding if I wanted to? With the blood of a virgin? You see, somewhere nearby lives an unusual denizen, one of the unseen, ancient and powerful vampires, among the oldest and strongest. Mm-hmm, and? Tusa is this unseen elder's territory. All vampires owe him fealty while they are here. He need but say the word, designate a time and place, and Detloff will be forced to appear. So this unseen elder, how do we convince him to summon Detloff? We must find him first. The elder does not see arrivals unless he absolutely must. But locals, Oriana, for instance, you know, she too is a... Yeah, figured it out. All right, let's say she gets me in to see the unseen elder. What then? I don't know. You'll have to improvise, I suppose. Hmm. So I'm basically stuck. Either gotta give in to a blackmailer, or fight him. You know what I would opt for? Should we free Siana and arrange for her to meet with Detlaf? There's a good chance we'll all survive this ordeal. Detlaf included. Regis, don't mean to put you on the spot, but I gotta know. Say I do decide to fight Detlaf. Who'll you stand with? Should you decide your sword is the sole solution, I shall not stand in your way. Appreciate it. Certainly hope so. Now, please tell me, what is it you intend to do? Crazy as the plan seems, I'll do it. I'll ask Damien about Siana. You won't make me beg. I knew you wouldn't. Slow down. Not promising a thing. Just want to get a feel for the situation to start with. Coming with? Of course. Many hands make light work. Hurry. Damien could be in danger. Or dead. Do you think so? He seemed battle-hardened. More than a few scraps under his belt. Against humans, not monsters.
lesser vampires would need a higher vampire's call of commands. As a rule, they don't. So how Detloff sick them on the city? I told you, he's exceptional. He manages to bend them to his will, control them with his thoughts. They'll continue attacking until he orders them to back down, or until he dies. like through butter. We must hurry. Each moment's delay means another death. Armor proved useless. Claws sliced through steel like through butter. We they broke formation. Ran. That scent. It's Damien's blood. He was wounded. Let's go. <laughs> Eric, he put up in the street. Pointless. That's no obstacle to a vampire. They didn't know. I didn't get a chance to prepare them. Inside. And I cannot let them see. Recognize the vampire in me. All these guys have lost my job. I'm sick. You killed it. Single handedly. That harlot's brood slaughtered half my unit. I see the harlot's brood came close to slaughtering you as well. Need to withdraw. You and your men. Now. My duty lies with the city. Won't help the city by leading your men to the slaughter. Damien. Conversation back at the palace, remember? I'll say it again. Your men don't stand a chance. to the wounded and prepare to march out. Doing the right thing. Now listen close. Silver. That's what you want to use against vampires. Your alchemists 
order them to produce as much vampire oil as they can, churn it out in gallons, then coat your blades with it. Keep an eye out for Alps and Bruxelles. The shapely ones resemble women. There one moment, gone the next. Bombs containing silver splinters are a pretty good idea. Thank you, Witcher. I hope you're worth the coin the Duchess pledged you. And that you'll return with the head of the wretch that did this, skewered on a hook. Your problem's my problem now. Leave it to me, I'll solve it. How? All I can say just now is I'm gonna need Sianna. You know the Duchess's decision. Sianna awaits her trial, in custody. We know it, but we do not agree with it. You've that luxury. I do not. I've sworn my loyalty to her grace. Folk are dying. Many more will, because of one. If her grace learns I helped you, my head will roll. And ours will follow right after it. Yet still we are prepared to take the risk. I fear we waste our time here. Come, Geralt. Wait. When... When last I saw Sianna, her grace was escorting her to the palace playroom. Playroom? As in, for children? Be sure? I've served in the Ducal Palace for years. I know it's every corner. So yes, I am damn sure. Playroom? So what, Duchess Loxiana up in a dollhouse? Honestly, I've no clue. Look, I've told you what I saw. What you do with it is no concern of mine. Got it. I'll look into it. You get back to your barracks. Retrace my steps. Path ought to be clear. And you've our gratitude. You helped us a great deal. I helped Beauclair. At least I hope I did. Let's go, Regis. Playrooms beyond this door. Careful! Locked. Of course. Regis. Rather not have a fist fight with this door. Would you mind? Not at all. look around at least. Wings off. Nice tune. 
Indeed, pleasant. It's a shame the mechanism is damaged. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What the? Found a notebook. Property of Isabel de Roquefort, court governess. The notes of Siana and Anna Henrietta's governess when they were little. I'm not sure it will help, but I suppose there's no harm in leafing through them. Siana gave me a drawing today. Charming. Of freshly decapitated bodies covered in blood. Perhaps not so much. I asked her why ever she would draw such a thing. Her Highness claimed it was a rendering of nightmares which have plagued her for as long as she can remember. Siana does wake up screaming nearly every night, save when she shares a bed with Honorietta. Curse of the Black Sun. Supposedly girls afflicted by it had horrible dreams. Kind of horrible that made some of them go mad. The girls quarreled today. I must note rather sadly they did not behave as befits future ladies. The incident devolved into fisticuffs. Anna Henrietta was first to strike her sister. Siana gave back as good as she'd gotten. By the time I separated them, Anna Rieta had lost two teeth. She ran off to complain to her parents. His Grace the Duke refused to believe my version of events. He laid all the blame on Siana and vowed to punish the little one harshly. Anna Rieta did her best to have her sister's sentence commuted, but the Duke and Duchess proved unbending. Once you're labeled a black sheep, it's so hard to shed that reputation. Today I accompanied the girls for the first time to the land of a thousand fables. We spent half the day there. First we played with Thumbelina, then with Barbarossa, who proved quite the charmer for a brigand and pirate. I'm beginning to suspect Isabel de Roquefort wrote in her diary after taking a powerful hallucinogenic. Cannabis rudelaris, for instance, or... Shh, don't interrupt. I tip my cap to Master Artorius Figo for his achievement. He has proved he has no equal in the arcane arts. Wait, Artorius was the court mage here, a specialist in illusions, which means... Regis, last warning. Stop interrupting or I'll seat you in the corner. The girls told me if I ever wish to visit alone, I need but crack open the land of a thousand fables and utter out loud the incantation Expecto Ludum. A book as the key to an illusion. My, my, this grows more interesting by the minute. Mages sent by the Conclave arrived today. They came to examine Siana. I cannot know what conclusions they drew, but His Grace now seems clearly upset. Hmm. Curse of the Black Sun. There's no doubt, then, that she was diagnosed with the syndrome symptoms. Or had that label planted on her. It goes on. I dared ask the Duke what would become of the girl. He did not reply. I tutored the girls in Nilfgaardian today. Siana applies herself so, though she has great difficulty memorizing new vocabulary. Lady Honorietta seems more gifted in this regard, yet also prone to impish behavior. When she thought me out of earshot, she called me a blood accuser. She and Siana laughed so hard they almost choked. Hmm. Bluda is damned, or cursed. What's Kusa? In the melodious tongue of our non-too-friendly neighbors to the south, the word describes the many-petaled flower that blooms in that place we so unmelodiously call the crotch. Hmm. Realize this might sound improbable, but maybe, just maybe, Anna Henrietta tossed Siana into that illusion. Not impossible. She would be safe there, and isolated. We must see. Where's that book? Miniature tableware and plush toys. Cute. Nothing under the carpet. Did you expect something? Apart from the dust swept under there by a lazy chambermaid. Hmm. This it? Let's see. A 
expecto ludum. Regis? Regis! Land of a thousand fables. Incredible. Hmm. Let's see where this road takes me. an illusion, but so powerful there's no way to dispel it. Let him out! Voices. He gobbled up my gingerbread! Now it's my turn to gobble him! <laughs> Hands off my half, dearie! You wouldn't want me to get cross. Then you open it! to be here, sweetie. Why, you're old. Old and pale. But never worry. A bit of butter, a bit of spice, and you'll make a tasty morsel. Just as soon as I catch you. you put that key? Listen, I... How do you come by a weapon? It's Prince Charming's. He no longer needs it. Here it is. <coughs> Thank you. She'd have begged me for certain if you'd not... Sienna? Is that you? It's been years, Jack. Have you come to play? No, I just want your beans, so you can breathe easy.
breathe easy. Because you aren't here to play? What's that about? Jack knows what I mean. So he'll tell me where the beans are as fast as he can. Isn't that right? Sian, I, I, I'm sorry, but... but I haven't got them. Oh. Something tells me you're lying. Perhaps you wish to play the old games after all, hmm? This little picky went to market. This little picky went home. For instance. I'm telling the truth. I swear it. Anurieta, she ordered them buried all over so you wouldn't be able to leave. Where? I... I don't know. But, but Joss, the boy with the thing for wolves, he should know. He sticks his nose in everyone's affairs. He had better know. Because if not, I'll find you and we'll have ourselves a little talk. Understand? Now shoo! Ah, all right. So why is it you're here? Came to free you. Nice of you, but a waste of your effort. I plan to free myself. You might, you might not. Bound to be easier with my help, as our most recent adventure amply showed. Mm-hmm. Yet I still don't know why you even give a damn. It's Deadlove. He's trying to force Anna Henrietta's hand. Wants her to release you. Summoned monsters to attack Beauclair. Sounds like Deadlove, all right. But I doubt you came all this way just to bring me up to speed on current events. So get to the point, please. Isn't it obvious? Offering to be your ally. We both want you out of here. You because you want your freedom back. Me because as soon as you meet with Detloff, he'll put an end to the chaos in the city. You exposed me. I landed in prison because of you. Now you come to beg my help, I dare say. My life is full of surprises, isn't it? But normally I'd tell you to sod off. But from what you say, folk are dying who have nothing to do with this. Not part of the plan. Detloff was only to kill those who deserved it. No one else. Fine, Witcher. I accept your offer. Consider us allies. Shake on it. This place. Tell me something more. It's an illusion, right? Yes. Created by Oturius Vigo. Anna, Henrietta, and I would come here to play out scenes from our favorite fables. Which didn't seem like she was playing. Magical entropy. Without maintenance, the spell gradually disintegrates over time. It grows wild. Your sister chose a dangerous place for your prison. It's deceptive. Provided I don't provoke them, the fairy tale characters don't attack me. But you, you don't belong here. So you had best be on your watch. Since you brought it up, the knights Detloff killed. What exactly did they do to you? Crespi, Duak, Lacroix, Peyrec Perrin? Not a memory I enjoy revisiting, but... I suppose you deserve to know. When my parents disowned me, they ordered those very knights to escort me beyond the duchy's borders. All did so without uttering a single word in my defense. Like you said, they had their orders. Mm-hmm. But Crespi was not ordered to beat me unconscious with a horsewhip after my first attempt at escape. And Ulak had no instructions to deny me food and abuse me. I learned something then. Knights are not so chivalrous when no one's watching. That explains a lot. Shocked, aren't you? You must have thought you had me pegged. Before bothering to hear my side. Everyone does that. Curse of the Black Sun. That's why you were banished, right? Mm-hmm. Twisted princesses, mutants. I'm certain you've heard of us. Even met one of you. Renfrey of Craden. And? Was she truly monstrous? She was cruel, that's certain. But what caused it? The curse or what she went through? Asking myself to this day... You killed her, didn't you? Had no choice. Funny. 
Mum said the same when she tossed me out of the house. So, what's with the beans? Mind explaining? Hmm, certainly. But you must gird yourself with patience. There are two ways out of this land. My darling sister blocked one when she tossed me in here. The other's up there, in the clouds. She made it hard, but not impossible to access by concealing the beans. Still don't understand. Don't fret, just listen. That boy, that was Jack, of Beanstalk fame. You know the tale? Jack climbed a gigantic beanstalk to a giant's castle, high up in the clouds. As we shall do if we can just find those blasted beans. There are three. One red, one blue, one yellow. Huh. Stock won't sprout from just one? No, because it must transpire exactly as it did in the tale. Clear now? So we must find Joss. Perhaps he will be able to help us. You lead. Joss can usually be found wandering the glade at the foot of the mount. It's some distance from here, past the witch's house to the right. So, what exactly is happening in the city? Bloodshed, a massacre, which is why we gotta hurry. You needn't forget, time flows differently in the Fable Sphere. We can stay here a week, yet outside, mere minutes will have passed. Watch out! Pixies! I've met. Put here to protect the Fable Sphere from intruders. Meaning you. Oh, unicorns! We must catch them. We won't have to walk everywhere then. I call the pink one. Exciting, isn't it? Reminds me of my childhood. Reminds me of something altogether different. Care to elaborate? Rather not. Another wolf behind you! Ignore him, he always lies. Aha, uh -huh. boy who cried wolf. Still does, I suppose. And doesn't, when they actually appear. The one and only. Listen, you little chit. Jack said you know what's become of his three beans. I don't know anything! Not one thing, and besides, watch out! Wolves!
This will be interesting. All right, let's get to it. Let's say for a minute you know what happened to the Red Beam. Where wouldn't it be? For certain no one swallowed it. Oh no, definitely not that. Of course not. But say someone didn't. Who would it be that didn't swallow it? A human. The most human human in the land of a thousand fables. Everyone! Wolves! Run! Bet you haven't heard what happened to the blue bean. Maybe? Not at all? Right? I've heard it lies about somewhere, out in the open. Just like that? No one guarding it? Nobody! Three times over! Help! Wolves! Yellow Beam. Don't know a thing about it, right? Hmm. It's somewhere very, and I mean very deep. So deep, in fact, it's completely underground. And who has it? Hmm? A bold farmhand, who in no way and not at all awaits someone. Not in the slightest. Good folk! Wolf! Say that word one more time and I'll chop you up. Feed you to the fishes. Understood? All right, we should go. Watch out for wolves! Tough to talk to, that one. Was it, though? You need merely remember he always lies. Or more precisely, refers us the truth. Mm hmm. Where to now? I'm not sure. We should visit some of the other fables. The meaty ones, that is. Perhaps then Joss's hints will make more sense. It's just a few. Red Riding Hood, Piglets and Bears, three of each. And Goldilocks, of course. Then Longlocks, and a little lass who sells flint. Ah, fine. Let's get to work. Incredible. You must have loved this place. I did at first. But children get bored quickly. Even tea parties with a whole cackle of princesses eventually turn dull and routine. What did you do then? Dropped a duck egg in the swan's nest once. That's what I think. Stole the pea out from under the princess. Who sleeps to this day, I think. Come out to show off his new role. Contract from a goose. That's new. You really aim to concern yourself? Care for a cicarillo? A bit of tobacco? A dab of fist tech? Uh, remind me, what tale are you from? Sold flints when I was a lass. But no one bought them, so I branched out. Now I deal in snuffs, puffs, all sorts of fun things. What'll you have, sweeties? Magic beans. Do you have any? If it's not the new name of some kicker I already have, dearies, then no. But maybe you'd like some. Hey, where'd you get that ribbon? That's mine. Is that so? Then why was it lying in the bushes? Find us keepers, sweetheart. The ribbon. Mind explaining what the fuss is about? There's not much to explain. I got it from Atorius Vigo when I was a child. It was to protect me from evil. It clearly didn't work, given how I ended up. But it means a lot to you. How should I put this? I have so few mementos from my childhood, and the Ripon reminds me of the good old days, when I was someone else. Dears, could you continue this touching scene elsewhere, hmm? You're scaring away my customers. Give Sienna the ribbon. Why not, huh? Sugar plum. The only thing I hand out for free is a first hit. To get them to come back for a second, of course. For all else, you've got to pay. What if I asked you nicely? Ask me nicely and I might play you for it. A round of cards? Hmm. 
What have you got to sell exactly? Like I said, tobacco. Get your hopes up. None can best me at Gwent. yours. Now skedaddle. All right. Tell me. What? What you want in return. You're not doing this out of the kindness of your heart. Don't want anything in return. I... Thank you. This long logs tower? Indeed. It's even taller than I remember. Wait. What Joss said about the third beam, remember? In the possession of a bold farmhand somewhere deep beneath the ground. Yes, this must be it. Let's go. It always grapple up her braid in the past, but I don't see it anywhere. We'll find another way up. Could pull myself up here, and I'll have to make that jump. If you say so, I shall wait down here if it's all the same. Climbing's not my strong suit. his corpse. Tried to free long locks, but fell and broke his neck.
is. Would have stunk to climb all that way for nothing. the being, but long locks. Mm. Seems she got sick of waiting for a knight in shining armor. Can you blame her? Men these days, dandies and fops all. That why you cozied up to a vampire? Dead love was a tool, and only a tool. Too bad he didn't know that. I trust no one. Learned that long ago. Now it's his turn. To use him. Was that your plan from the start? No. At first I was simply intrigued. Do you know the story? It was in Matina, a few years past. I'd gone there to pass some loot off to a fence I know. We were hashing out the terms when in walked Detloff. He said he'd come to sell a silver candlestick. And gripped it through a cloth. That caught my eye. I followed him out, observed him from a distance. But he caught on quickly. Yeah, superhuman senses will do that. He turned down a blind alley. I followed. He jumped out from behind a crate, baring his teeth. I suppose he'd wanted to frighten me. Alas, he didn't in the least. After all, I'm a monster too, am I not? A higher vampire and you were unimpressed? Don't know if that's brave or just plain foolish. I've always had a way with ostensibly dangerous, quiet types. That's supposed to be about me, too? Ugh, oh, brother, I hate to disappoint you, Geralt, but your belly button is not the center of the known world. No, you do remind me of him a bit. Stifling all emotions inside you. Ever feigning indifference. You see, when I met Deadlove, I... Somehow I knew. Call it intuition. That he meant me no harm. That he was trying to frighten me off, for he, too, was scared. Now do you understand? I guess. What happened then? We talked. Then met up once, twice, three times. Enough that he became infatuated. I truly enjoyed it at first. But only at first. He did not love like a man. But like an animal, madly, deeply, unconditionally, wildly. To return such a feeling, anyone would be hard-pressed. Let alone someone as twisted as I am. So there came a day you just up and disappeared? Yes. There was no other way. Let's just be friends. Or, I don't deserve you. He'd never have understood that sort of thing. But then, once I decided to return, clean up some old affairs, I remembered him, and concluded he could still be of use. Playing with fire, that. Definitely. And either I'll get burned, or I'll burn all else down. No other options. Got a history with Detlaf now. So this meeting will be different. Not afraid? I can handle him. Mm-hmm. Sure about that? You look at him as a witcher and see a monster. I... I know what he's really like. You needn't worry. It's time to go. Just a bit more work and we'll be able to say sort off to this fecking fable sphere. The three little pig's homes. Well, you know the story, don't you? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Looks like big bad's already blown down the houses of straw and sticks. Brick's the only one left. We should look inside. 
Remember Joss's words? Mm -hmm. One being lies out in the open, guarded by three nobodies. Yeah, that could be it. Witcher huffed and puffed, and look, got a beam. It cannot be. What cannot be? You actually have a sense of humor. Stunted a bit, but yeah, it's there. Well, well, aren't you full of surprises? What else are you hiding behind that gruff exterior? Not a bad singer. Do a pretty mean rendition of the Maids of Vicovaro, for instance. But some other time, maybe. But here we are chatting away when there's work to do. We must keep looking. So, do you like it here? No. Got a problem with magic in general. Illusions, portals, all that. Don't trust any of it. A bow of old-fashioned tastes, eh? I like that. Recognize it? Once upon a time, a terrible dragon attacked Vizima. It took a clever young conqueror to bring about its defeat. Right. Every now and again, some village idiot tries to imitate him. And I gotta come in to clean up the mess. Hello? Can we talk? Shmumbach, my head! Damn it all! I swear that was the last time I drank with Redbeard. Oh, Siana, a bloody long time it's been. You've changed. Whereas you, not at all, big bad wolf. Though it seems you've started running with the wrong crowd. And who should I run with, eh? Thumbelina? One shot and she's under the table. But, 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 what brings you? You could always have a drink with us. Oh, what now? 
Not on your life. I can barely stand I'm so hungover. You know what they say about the hair of the dog? Out of the question. And why must you drink? Do you wish to drown some sorrow? And I don't mean to pry, but you don't look much like a young duchess to me. They stripped me off my title and birthright, then banished me. A family spat, let's say. Listen, looking for magic beans. Seen any? Mm, I was given one for safekeeping, but... Where is it? Talk! Shh, not so loud. Oh, I can be much louder than this. And resort to other means of persuasion. Uh, right there, the threats. Siana to a T. Listen, I exist to restage a fairy tale. If you want to play at it, I'll be happy to oblige. But it won't be easy. The thing is, little red riding hoods popped her clogs. What? A thousand times they cut my gut open, filled it full of rocks and drowned me in the river. So once you stopped coming, I decided to repay the little imp for all her loving labor. Good now, what's at the bottom of the well, she and the hunter, which means we can't play, and I'm under no obligation to talk to you, not about beans, nor anything else. So leave me be. Sod off. Hmm. Wolf's pretty cranky. Surprised? Think about it. He was cast in the role of the nemesis without ever asking for it. It's a dog's life, I tell you. So, what now? Don't worry. I'll play with him. No, rather, play him. I just need that little red hood. The piece of apparel, that is. Not the poor girl's corpse. That's a relief. You wish to help me? Here's your chance. Jump in the well and fish it out. Well, chop chop. All right, time to jump in the well. Break a leg. Any luck? Yep. Look what I got. That would never fit you. Give it to me. How do I look? Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go see the big bad wolf. Let me guess. You'll play the granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And you, the hunter. You again? I thought I was clear. I will not talk to you if Little Red Riding Hood is not with you! Not a problem. Siana can take her place. What? <sighs> Very well. It's not as if I can forbid you. <laughs> Granddaughter, come closer, sweetie. But, Grandmama, what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. Granny, what big arms you have. The better to embrace you with, my dear. And, Grandmama, what big teeth you have. Eh? The better to eat you is, my dear! Ugly Damn it. Here.
Joss said about the red bean. A human has it, and he definitely didn't swallow it. Mm-hmm. Gotta open his belly. Bottle caps, fake teeth, a corkscrew. Ah, here it is. Red bean. Ah, at last we have them all. What? Now I find myself wondering if you're just horribly discreet, or if those mutations completely scrubbed away your curiosity. Are you really not interested in what happened? In what became of me after they cast me out? Well, since you brought it up, I'd gladly hear the rest. Let's see. They had escorted you out of the duchy. Yes. And the noble knights of Toussaint and I didn't stop until we reached the Ketdu wilderness. They left me there alone, without a copper, in a torn lace dress, right when the frosts were setting in. They assumed something would eat me, or that I'd do everyone a favor and die of hunger. But as always, I failed to live up to expectations. I wandered the woods for a week, went purple from the cold, gnawed the bark, from twigs. Finally, I saw a light among the trees. A campsite. They were bandits, bearded, drunk, spattered with blood. I was sure they'd rape me or kill me, or both. Take it neither happened? That's when I learned a robber and a murderer can be a better man than a knight in shining armor. They took me in, we set off for Nazaire, and I did what I could to repay them. I advanced in their ranks rather quickly. Eventually, I became their leader. Of the whole ragged band. Should have stayed there, maybe. Perhaps. Perhaps I should have forgotten everything, started a new life. But you know what? There came a point when I thought, you wanted a monster. Then a monster you shall get. Been through a lot. I have. And throughout this time, my sister was stomping grapes and shagging minstrels on down bedding. She wasn't the one to banish you. And I'm not angry at her for that. I'm angry at her because she forgot about me. Right. We've had our chat. Come. Four animals stacked atop each other. What was the tale called again? The Musicians of Blaviken. Huh. You've some link to the town as well, don't you? Wait! Why? The stalk will sprout abruptly. Very abruptly. We must be careful.
All right, toss them. It's always got to go. The home stretch. Admire the view later. First, we must deal with... Him. you this land had gone ape mad, though I did not expect it to be so severe. Can't help thinking you might have done that on purpose. Why ever would I have? To get rid of your guard, your captor. Getting close to the exit at this point, probably think you don't need me anymore. Well, you're wrong. You still stand to be quite useful to me. That's so? How? Plan to use me like you did Detloff? No, I need you for a purpose far simpler. Well, don't just stand there and stare. I need a man, Geralt, and I'm not afraid to say it. I have no idea what awaits me once we leave this place. Treat it as my last wish.
go our separate ways. No parting words. Did you wish to tell me something? Actually, it'd probably be best. Oh my. No woman's ever treated you this way. Not that I recall, no. In that case, at last you felt what so many women in this world feel at times. I just hope this tale has a happy ending. For me, for you, for everyone. That may very well depend on you. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing beyond what you heard. For now. Come. The exit's this way. not to be trusted. Just curious. Why do you want the heart of Toussaint and the ducal wine? They were my right, my due. Doubt we would have figured you out if you hadn't tried to get them. Know that, don't you? I do, and I regret nothing. One lives but once. Here, we need but jump into the well. You first. It was a secret passage. Anariette and I would use it to... Hide from your governess, which luckily she noted down in her diary. Thus, I knew where to await you. Never mind that. Has the young lady agreed to help clean up the mess she's made? She has. And stop treating me as if I were a child. Would you prefer I treated you like the lying manipulator you are? Calm down, both of you. But... No buts. Let's go. Really want to be done with this. place isn't it offers a lovely view of the valley on a clear day you can see the outlines of Duntine is it though a ruin like any other I think uh, so sensitive so aware honestly what did Declaf ever see in you perhaps he'll tell you himself You nervous? Mm-hmm. It's always a bit nerve-wracking meeting an ex. Especially so when said ex is a vampire. I doubt he'll be in the mood for jests. I know. Ugh. May I be honest? Yes. I'm nervous. I really would prefer just to run off. I gave my word I would help, I know. But how much is that worth? Yet I owe him this meeting. And that is that. Let's get ready. Dadloff will be here any moment now.
That which bound us was a ruse. Dead love. It's not that simple. I... Oh, no. It's very simple. You either deceived me or not. In forgiving you, I grieve. For now, we must part. What? But how? The ribbon. Ha! Seems I've been fooled again. She will pay for this sooner or later. She will pay! You never should have meddled with her!
Leave him to me. Be gone. I can't let him. I insist. A smashing ensemble. You wear it well. Shut up. I look like a twit. The caftan is sewn of the best fabrics available, and according to the best tailoring practices. But one must have a modicum of taste to appreciate this. Even the most exquisite robes cover only deficiencies in beauty, never in refinement. Usually wear something different, better suited to my trade. Got nothing against this particular outfit, though. Just don't exactly feel comfortable in it. And I despise formal occasions. Hmm. Nothing one can't get accustomed to. Now, be so kind as to stand still. All that being as it may, Toussaint's highest honor, the Order of Vitis Vinifera, demands appropriate attire. The Duchess cannot be expected to drape the medal on a suit of armor caked in mud. Palace protocol places enormous emphasis on form, virtuous tradition, etiquette. Huh. A tradition which values appearances ahead of all else. Which calls for lordly, glistening triviality and misplaced generosity. Sound wistful. Pensive, Regis. That because they refuse to buy you a new outfit? Hardly. It's the tone I ever adopt when I find myself pondering, which, believe it or not, happens quite a lot. Besides, I've no need for a new outfit as I shall not be attending the ceremony. Why not? Because unlike you, I don't have to. I shall begin to pack my belongings instead. I trust you'll join me later, once you're richer by a medal and a fascinating new experience. Count on it. Hmm. Ceremonies. Medals honoring virtues. Just keeps coming up. I've had no reprieve either. And I keep thinking of the last great virtue, compassion. It's the one piece of the puzzle that never seemed to fit. Mean you suddenly believe the five virtues theory? After all we've revealed? It's not a question of belief, superstition, or old wives' tales. It's a conclusion derived through exercising pure logic. Siana planned everything in advance. Had we not stopped her, surely there'd have been a fifth victim. One the gossips would have associated with a lack of compassion. Her plans don't matter now. Can't act on them. Ask the messenger who delivered my invitation to the ceremony. Siana's in the palace. Courtiers pressured the Duchess to lock her in a tower. Do you care not a whit who else was in her black book? We've some time before the ceremony. We could still chat with that boot-cleaning urchin. He was the one to pass the victims' names to Detlaf. Perhaps we missed something. Regis, Bootblack didn't say anything about making deliveries when we talked to him. How do you know he handled the letters? While you basked in glory and tried on new formal wear, I conducted a little investigation of my own. You'd be very proud to see how I conducted myself. I began by concocting an ample supply of boot wash for our enterprising young friend. I'd observed that among street folk, amidst their society as a whole, reciprocity takes precedence over all other codes, and thus no good deed goes unrewarded. Of course, 
the same holds true for malicious or destructive deeds. The letters. What's the connection? When the boot black arrived to collect his bucketful, he hinted he knew more. Simply put, we'd failed to ask the proper questions when we chatted earlier. It took a bit more tongue loosening, but ultimately he spoke. He admitted he'd handed Detlaf the letters. He knew this information was valuable to me. In providing it, he was simply repaying me. All in all, why not check up on that? We'll go together, assuming we're done here. I am done, yes. It lies in your hands now to see if you are able to present my handiwork at the ceremony with the dignity it is due. Or if you will first destroy it, crawling about the city's underbelly. Promise to be careful. Oh, it's the swordsman. Good to see you. Here for a spiffing? Dirty boots are a stain on professional dignity, you know. Step on up. Need to ask you something. Yet again? Go on, then. I'm a proponent of free speech, and I will gladly tell you all I know. But why not get your boots shanked while we jabber? Guess they could use a spit and polish. Then I shall take advantage as well. A friend of mine used to say boots should be as clean as the soles that wear them. Clean boots, clean soles. A fine slogan. How's business? Well enough. I can't complain. Though it'd be even better for certain folk to sit down for a shine as they stood and chatted. Man in the frock coat. You passed him some letters, remember? Why, of course. I'm young, got a mind like a steel trap, but... If you're about to tell me this information will cost me, forget it. How'd you get those letters? Beckers brought them. Why didn't you tell us this before, when we first talked? You didn't ask about beggars now, did you? Beggars. Tell us more about them. How many were there? Why, four. One for each letter. Just four? Sure you didn't get a fifth? I can't count, you know. Remember anything else? These beggars have anything in common? What? Come now. It was different. Some had mismatched boots, others had no boots at all. Oh, I know! They all had no home! Kid, my patience is starting to run a little thin. Now think hard. Remember what they looked like? Of course. I've a mind like a steel trap, as I said. They were ragged, unshaved. Their clothes were tattered. As to their boots, well, I mentioned that already. Geralt, allow me to ask a question. Listen, lad. I'll be glad to mix another batch of that boot shine for you. But you must focus now and tell us all you know. Where can we find the beggars? Well, at the shelter, most like. Where's that? Everyone knows. It's just round the corner. Up those stairs, then right. Thanks, kid. For your trouble. We must visit the shelter. Look around inside. camp elsewhere, got it? This is a decent district. You? What do you want? To talk. Here, that's a waste of breath. We've tried it, only to tire our lips. We'll use other means of persuasion now. Gentlemen, calm. 
Please. Either get out along with these flea-ridden vagabonds, or we'll toss you all out. Our patience is gone. This place is no longer a rank refuse dump. Scram! Decent folk live here. The shelter. Them living here bothers you. Question is why. Look, Ballard. Another defender of the poor. Fighter for justice. Damn you, sense. We for our women and young folk living next door. When even grown men fear to walk past such rabble. Decent folk you mention. Mean yourselves. Why? Do you doubt it? Hell yes. Hear that, Artois? He poking insults us. On our own turf. We should step aside, good fellow. My friend is perfectly capable of settling this unfortunate dispute on his own. Witcher! Fucking twit! Not a witcher! Lost your nerve? I thank you so much for your aid. I tried to reason with them, but they'd have beat me blue had you not come along. I'm grateful. Immensely. What did they want from you? They are neighbors. Wish me to take my folk, the shelter, elsewhere. They dislike that I help the beggars. I do not oppose going elsewhere were we to have somewhere to go. But you've come with a problem, have you? My turn to aid you. What is this place? Poor house? You could call it that. They come here to rest and eat a hot meal. You help them, why? Because they need help. Need some information. Looking for a man who might have mentioned the boot black in Rue de Garl. The boot black? A feisty lad. I know him. Any of your, uh... Wards supposed to meet him recently, or soon? Forgive me. Those I help and I are not so close that I would know. But should you wait, they'll all soon come for their meal. You can question them yourselves. Sure all your usual beggars will be here? They're not obliged to come, of course. But they rarely find a decent meal elsewhere. So, almost all in the area eat here. Thanks. We'll wait. Nice of you to let us. My dears, I have a matter to address before I serve this soup. These two gentlemen have some questions of you. Pay attention. Answer in brief, for if you draw it out, your soup will go cold, and we wouldn't want that, would we? Recently, four of you delivered sealed letters to the boot black. I know this. Does anyone know what the gentleman means? Go on, speak up. Romain? Why should I squeal? We were all told not to mention the letters. We all swore. You can tell me, Romain. In a letter, and you delivered it, right? Good work, Romain. Thank you. Who else? I got the one too. Uh, gave it to the boot black. And Freshy, he got one. But he can't tell you, as he's not here. I still have mine. I'm to deliver it two days after the Feast of St. Barnabas.
It's a matter of importance to the duchy. Hand it over, or I'll take it from you, plain and simple. But I was to deliver it personally. Let no one else see it. That is what she said, and she was frightened. You ought to heed folk who are kind and honest. These men helped me a short while ago, helped all of us. If this individual threatened you, you need not keep the promise you made. All right, take it. I didn't want to see the boot black anyways. It's always muddy there. Damn it. What is it? Another name, truly? See for yourself. Well, well. I... I must say, even I did not expect this. This time, you will see to our Duquesa. It seems we underestimated Siano rather grossly. Judging by this, Detloff was literally supposed to tear her heart out. Yet first you must snap her neck. Puzzling. Puzzle complete now. Alas, the matter ceased to be a tantalizing brain tease and has turned incredibly grave. We've proof of a plot to assassinate Toussaint's ruler. We've proof of a coup d'etat. Duchess was to be Detloff's last victim. Siana planned it from the start. Indeed. The logical conclusion, Geralt. Four seemingly random victims to start. The virtues their only link. Enough to get folk talking about a righteous, vengeful beast. Obscured the victim's links to Siana, even as she had those she despised killed off one by one, leaving the Duchess for last. Had she managed to fulfill her plan, none would have questioned the reasons. Most would have thought Anna Henrietta had died for her sins. She was known to show a hard heart on many occasions, ample proof of a lack of compassion. Why would Siana murder her own sister? Out of envy? To take power? from an inborn pension for evil? Yes, yes, and yes. All seem likely, and none are mutually exclusive. But if you'd like to know for certain, you could always ask it yourself. Actually, love to learn her motives. Praiseworthy, I suppose. Sometimes one should stare evil in the face. Seems a bit strong, no? She used my friend as her tool for killing. I believe I've every right to condemn her, but I support your lust for the truth. Some philosophers think empirical examination the sole path to knowledge. I believe you mentioned the Duchess keeps Siana locked up. Courtiers were insisting on a harsher punishment. Much harsher. Think Anna Henrietta had to protect her sister from a lynch mob as much as she wanted to protect her subjects from a criminal. One way or another, she's locked away in a secluded wing of the palace, awaiting trial before a court of law. I'd need to get past some guards to see her. Coming with? Of course not. I shall await you at Mayor Leche's long. I'll not risk entering the palace after Detlaf and his minions' rampage. Besides, I vastly prefer the company of a simple mug of mandrake brew to that of the Duchess's vile sister. So, said straight up, it means you're going off to get drunk because you hate Siana. I've never been fond of categorical statements of that kind, but I admit I could not vouch for my behavior in her presence. She treated Detlaf cruelly, caused his death in the end, and now this, atop all that, no, Geralt. I will not go with you. I will await you at the cemetery.
Halt! Need to see Siana urgently. In the matter of? Want to talk to her. It's important. Want to talk? Go see your gran at tea time. Not one locked up on the Duquesa's orders. No doing without special permission. Period. Found some information important to her case. Need an explanation. Urgently. Ah, fine then. You're that witcher who solved the murders, no? Then you for my permission, but only for a few minutes. Promise to be brief. The Witcher will speak with the inmate. You can take a momentary break. As long as it's truly but a moment. Highly irregular, this. Have you come to see how I fare? I'm fine, thank you. Artorius's Ripon worked wonders. It's a shame they took it from I me I know for... who the fifth victim was supposed to be. Goodness, you're simply a compulsive snoop. I'm in prison. Deadlaf is dead. Could you not just drop it? Sienna, stop pretending you couldn't care less. I know it's an act, and it's really starting to wear. Why do you want to kill her? For such an accomplished investigator to ask about the obvious? Come now, Geralt. Why do you think? Because she turned her back on you, then banished all memory of you. Bravo, Geralt. Yet another riddle solved, and your sick curiosity sated. Well, what now? Off to share your discovery with Anna Henrietta. Though she's no longer in danger, true. But she very well might add a little something to your reward. Definitely gonna tell her. Not necessarily for the coin, though. Then why do it at all? She oughta know. If only because you'll probably try to kill her again if she ever lets you out. I probably will. Perhaps, just for a second, you could stop dwelling on all the wrongs folk have done you and forgive her. Why should I? For old time's sake. You loved each other once. <sighs> Please. I don't know who fed you that rubbish, but... Read your governess's diary. You played together. We're inseparable. Honorietta'd get you into trouble sometimes, sure. But there were also times she stood up for you. When you had nightmares, only she could calm you. Time eats away at memories. Distorts them. Sometimes we only remember the good. Sometimes only the bad. If she loved me so, why did she wash her hands off me? Forget me, hmm? Don't know. But you could just ask her instead of sending monsters after her. There's nothing she could say to change what she did to me. To justify it. Maybe. But there's nothing out there to justify what you did to her and all Toussaint. Yet Anna Henrietta hasn't given up on you. Ugh. You meant what you said in the Land of a Thousand Fables. You really want a happy ending to this story, don't you? Ah, with all of us living happily ever after. Go, Witcher, or they'll give your medal to another. And that would be a shame. Farewell, Sienna.
Commander de la Tour would like to see you. Shall we go at once? Let's go. Want to see him too. Damien. Geralt, it's about time. Ready for the ceremony? Your face doesn't look good. Though it looked even worse last I saw you. I apply a balm of Annika. Yeah, I hardly feel it anymore. Got some important information. Anna Henrietta was supposed to be Detloff and Siana's fifth victim. You are certain of this? Completely. Found proof. Inconceivable. How could she? The murders, the mayhem she brought down on the city, were they not enough? She sought to strike down her own sister, her liege. Traitor. I must alert my men. Enlarge the Duchess's honor guard. Make certain Sylvia Anna is closely watched during the questioning. I'll see to it personally. I thank you, Witcher, for alerting me. And I appreciate your attentiveness. Let's begin the ceremony. Come with me. The Duchess awaits. In the guild's name, I beg your assistance, your enlightened highness. Without barrels, production will come to a stop, and it will be the end of us. You lost them all in the fire. These are horrible tidings. Oh, we are most dreadfully saddened. Yes, your enlightened highness all. Once the beasts had clawed their way into the warehouse, the whole place went up in flames. I shall dispatch a palace guardsman to examine the site of the blaze. If things are as you say, fitting compensation shall be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Thank you, your enlightened highness. Your Grace, Geralt of Rivia has arrived. My dear subjects, we come now to our next point of business. Of all the duties which fall upon my shoulders, as the ruler of this dominion, this duty is dearest to my heart. For now, we shall award the Order of Vitis Vinifera, Tucson's highest honor. Geralt of Rivia, slayer of the beast of Beauclair, step forth. We bestow the distinction upon the Witcher, who saved Beauclair from the terrible beast. Such is our desire. May this symbol serve as a reminder to all that the Witcher shall forever remain a friend of Beauclair. In more familiar terms now, I thank you immensely, Geralt. Damien has your reward for you. After all, it was but a contract. Thank you. I have a small surprise for you, in addition. I give you more than a dozen barrels of Son Real, the wine normally reserved for the ducal table. The gustatory experience of a lifetime awaits. Are you content? Grateful, Your Grace. Sadly, I'm afraid I have to sour the mood. It's Sianna. She plotted to have you killed, Duchess. Planned to use Dedloff. You were to be the Beast's fifth victim. This cannot be true. You're mistaken. You must be. I have proof.
I do not believe it. In a moment I shall speak to Siana. Will you assist me? You returned my sister to me, yet what you tell me now I find devastating. I've come to doubt that I can judge her fairly. I'd far prefer to learn you're mistaken, Geralt. I'm not. In fact, I'd recommend you be particularly careful around her. You exaggerate, Witcher. She is my sister. I know well how to speak to her. If my presence will help in any manner, of course I'll stay. We shall now question a person implicated in the murders which recently ravaged our fair city of Beauclair. Captain de la Tour, show Sylvia Anna in. The Witcher will take part in our talk. The Duchess requested I be present. You have committed crimes. Grave crimes. Yet you are my sister. And my heart does not allow me to treat you as a common criminal. Nor does it let me believe you sought my demise. My heart yearns to know you were swayed by the monster Detlaf. You yourself would never stoop so low. Thus I have asked Geralt to advise me, as one impartial. I shall now hear what he has to say. Your Grace, Siana's guilt is clear. None have cause to doubt it. But before you decide, you should hear her out. The right to a defense is hers, as it applies to all who stand accused. What is he talking about, Siana? You know exactly what. I was forcibly exiled, remember? To your benefit. You knew well the throne would then be yours, though I was the elder. The ministers I can understand. They'd hated me since I was a child, thought me a poor prospect for the wife of a duke. I even understand our parents had always sent the problem. They simply feared me, for I dared to be free. That fabricated curse, it fell into their laps. A gift from above that brought relief. But you... Your dagger hurt most. You were my honorietta, dammit. My darling little sister. Now do you understand, Witcher? She betrayed me. You were children then. You and your sister both had no control over what happened. You're wrong, Witcher. She had control. Remember, dear sister, the day they banished me from the palace. Of course, I'd had the idea to pelt the Nilfgaardian envoy with fish platters which we filled with rancid suet on a lark, and which you set afire at the last to impress me, I imagine. And I admit, you did. Hit him right in his hideous bold patch. Never laughed so hard in my life. But when it came time to find the culprit, you said not a word. I took all the blame and all the punishment. It's true. I did not stand up for you. I was too afraid. The council was unanimous. They listed all my offenses, my flights from the palace, supposed acts of cruelty, inappropriate friendships. They cast me out, but you, the only one to understand me, you cowered in a corner, lifted not a finger to help. Not before, not after. You never tried to find me. 
That's not true. I searched for you. Sent out knights, gathered tidings from without. You did not wish to be found. Since the day you vanished, I have lived with the knowledge that I failed you. I'm sorry, dear sister. Can you forgive me? ceremony it was short perhaps for you as you ducked out early the others are probably just getting started the drunkenness never ends in this quaint realm not so fond of Toussaint after all are we oh this place is like a strong wine Geralt good in small sips How do you find my personal brew? Not too strong. Just right. Credit the local mandrake of the Alrauna Diabolus variety for that. The tubers which grow in this area's volcanic soil have an altogether unique flavor profile and display a remarkably uncommon dark brown tint. Fascinating. All I can say is this batch turned out excellent. Indeed. It might be wise to stockpile some roots for the future. Would you care to accompany me? If you think it's a good idea, let's go. But I think you might be forgetting one thing. Fresh mandrake root of this variety is highly toxic, even to a witcher. Ah, not a problem. I never forget matters of safety and hygiene in alchemy. Here, gloves and a mask. Don them, and you shall be in no danger. Thanks. Right then, let's go. This moonlight makes me, oh, so dreamy. Penny for your thoughts. Let me guess. Archivist twins? Uh, no, I was thinking about, oh, how anything can look interesting when properly lit. Even an old necrophage corpse? You've not an ounce of refinement in you, have you? to add Jimson weed in the last phase could be an intriguing blend that Sucker go. Won't be easy to track down. He's a vampire after all. Regis! Damn it, where'd you go? Regis!
where to go. Say they called you a traitor. Alas, we have a very simple code of honor, we vampires. So simple you might call it trivial. Either one is with us, unconditionally, regardless of the circumstances, or... Won't let it go, will they? They will not. Fortunately, we have another rule. An unwritten one, and just as trivial as the first. It is neatly summarized in the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is why I must leave Toussaint. For a vastly long time, most like. Yeah, I get it. Oh, let us make for my camp. I have an overwhelming desire to have another drink. Mmm, supreme bouquet. Firm, defined beginning, then developed gently, rising to a, a startling finish. Don't you think? Not much of a connoisseur. Then it is high time you started your education. After all, the Corvo Bianco vineyard is now yours. By the way, I left a gift for you at your new home, on the nightstand. <laughs> Thanks. Mind telling me what it is? Ugh, a trifle. That will nonetheless be useful should you need mutagens. Incidentally, have you thought about what you'll do with your prize? Shall you hang your swords over the mantle and take to pruning vines? Uh, don't really know yet. Might find the life of a hard-working vintner too tempting one day. Or maybe I'll just stick to the path, go on roaming, staring up at the stars after laying my bedroll at the roadside. Ah, roadsides, bedrolls, and the sky above. I sense some poetry coming on, which of course brings to mind Dandelion. I can remember a night, not too far from here if I'm not mistaken. We hid in a cave while a blizzard raged all about. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? We just set off to rescue Ciri from Vilgefortz. Oh, our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly. That first stain, Beauclair, far calmer than this one. Seemed like a land straight out of a fairy tale back then. Its sole problem, cellars too small to accommodate all that wine. Appearances, Geralt. Appearances like Mamoons and Dopplers deceive. So what did become of Vilgefortz? Killed him. Sure wasn't easy, though. What about you? Any idea where you'll go? Distance is of the essence. I thought I might let you sell. Nilfgaard? Why ever not? The Nilfgaardians are a modern society. None there believe in vampires anymore. This fact alone could be very useful to one wishing to remain incognito. Hmm. Interesting point of view. <sighs> I so don't feel like going anywhere. Sit here a while longer? So we shall, my friend. We have witnessed, and in fact on several occasions incited, many great and weighty events. After all that toil, I believe we deserve a bit of a rest. That we do.
Kelly wept to the beast? The beast! Not bad. Master Witcher, some unknown individual barged into the residence. I resisted as best I could, but to no avail. Who is it? Alas, they did not do me the basic courtesy of introducing themselves. You look good. Calm. Don't just stand there. I want a hug. Thought I'd... I'd never see you again. Well, I've departed, escaped. Been forced to flee so many times. Yet, I always returned. You ought to be used to it by now. I like coming back into your life. I'm just glad you're here. You've a lovely home. With a great deal of potential. And got it from the Duchess as her down payment for killing the beast. Even started to renovate a bit. Come outside, let me show you the grounds. It's lovely here. I could stay forever. Anything stopping you? Obligations, duties. I'm only here because Papa, I mean, Emir, concluded I must get to know what I'll rule once I take the throne. So I'm on a tour of the provinces with a small swarm of advisors. Which essentially means they take turns lecturing me while I follow them about, scribbling notes. Plan to stay in Beauclair a while? A bit. I convinced my advisors we'd be unwise to depart before I tasted each of this year's wines. My knowledge would be incomplete, you see. Though, actually, just between you and me, I'm not certain I'm cut out to rule, govern, all that. Thinking you might give it up? I can't say just yet, but I'm not willing to rule it out. How fares your venerable father? He seems younger, quite rejuvenated. Abandoning high-level politics seems to have done it. It's as if the very awareness of peace grants him strength, which most likely is the case. Think you'll keep his word? I think that depends on me. If he feels I'm up to the task, he'll head out to pasture. Yes. And if he doesn't? Then there'll be nothing to stop him from returning. He hasn't ever had a problem changing his mind. Preparations for the coronation coming along? Not at all. I told him I'm in no hurry. I must see what the whole thing's about first. Acquaint myself with the Empire's institutions, laws, and so forth. No pressure from Amir to speed things along? <laughs> he tried. But I told him I wished to be a good ruler, a strong ruler, not some puppet. No one else in the world he'd give in to like that. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. There's just no one else in the world who's his daughter. Uh, speaking of which, as the future Empress, I could secure you a comfortable position as court witcher. Thanks, but just not my thing, that. My place is on the path. <laughs> I know. Still, had to try. See you later, Siri. Take care of yourself.